The Beauty of Serengeti Hi Isabella. Have you ever watched a nature documentary about the Serengeti in Africa? Hello Eric. Yes, I've seen a few documentaries. It's an amazing place with lots of beautiful landscapes and wildlife. I agree. I watched one recently, and I was fascinated by the vast open plains and the variety of animals that live there. Did you know that Serengeti is home to the largest land animal migration in the world? Yes, I've heard about the Great Migration. It's when millions of wildebeest, zebras, and other animals travel in search of food and water, right? That's correct. They travel around 1,800 miles each year, facing many challenges like crossing crocodile-infested rivers and avoiding predators like lions and hyenas. Wow, that's incredible. I also read that the Serengeti ecosystem supports the highest concentration of large predators in the world. Yes, it's true. The predators are essential for maintaining the balance in the ecosystem. For instance, lions help control the population of herbivores by hunting them for food. I remember seeing a documentary about the endangered African elephants in the Serengeti. They're such intelligent and social animals. Absolutely. Elephants are known for their strong family bonds and their ability to communicate with each other. They also play a vital role in shaping the landscape by uprooting trees and creating clearings, which promotes the growth of grasslands. It's sad to think about how human activities, like poaching and habitat loss, are threatening these amazing creatures. Yes, it's crucial to raise awareness and support conservation efforts to protect the Serengeti and its inhabitants. Many organizations are working hard to preserve this unique ecosystem. That's true. And ecotourism can also contribute to conservation by providing funds for wildlife protection and supporting local communities. Absolutely. Visiting the Serengeti on a responsible safari can be a life-changing experience, offering a chance to witness the beauty of nature while supporting its preservation. I'd love to visit the Serengeti one day and see its breathtaking landscapes and incredible wildlife with my own eyes. Me too, Isabella. It's definitely on my bucket list. Until then, we can continue learning about it and sharing our knowledge with others to help promote conservation. That's a great idea, Eric. Let's keep exploring the wonders of our planet and do our part to protect it. I couldn't agree more, Isabella. Let's keep our passion for nature alive and inspire others to join us in our journey. The big news, Charles and Elizabeth are getting engaged. Elizabeth are getting engaged. Hello Elizabeth, you look beautiful today. How are you feeling? Hi Charles, thank you for the compliment. I'm feeling great. How about you? I'm feeling fantastic, especially since I have something important to tell you. Oh, really? What is it? Well, Elizabeth, we've been together for a long time now and I think it's time for us to take our relationship to the next level. Charles, are you saying what I think you're saying? Yes, Elizabeth. I'm asking if you'd like to become engaged to me. Will you be my fiancé? Oh Charles, I'm so happy. Yes, I will be your fiancé. I'm thrilled to hear that, Elizabeth. I can't wait to spend the rest of my life with you. Same here, Charles. What do we need to do next? Well, traditionally, the next step would be to choose an engagement ring. Would you like to come with me to pick one out, or would you like it to be a surprise? I would love to pick out the ring together, Charles. Great. We can visit the jewelry store next week. Besides that, we should also start thinking about our engagement party. That sounds like fun. Should we have a theme for the party? That's a good idea. We could think about our shared interests and decide on a theme that represents us. I agree, Charles. 
We also need to make a guest list. Yes, we should include our close friends and family. They'll be excited to hear our good news. Absolutely. And we'll need to decide on the food, drinks, and decorations. That's right. We can start planning those details once we've set a date for the party. I'm looking forward to planning this party with you, Charles. I am too, Elizabeth. And most importantly, I'm looking forward to spending the rest of my life with you. I feel the same way, Charles. This is the beginning of a new and exciting chapter in our lives. The Grand Shopping Adventure of Charles and Elizabeth Hi Elizabeth, how are you today? Hello Charles, I'm doing well, thank you. How about you? I'm doing great, thanks. I heard you went shopping this weekend. What happened? Oh, it was quite the adventure. I went to the new mall downtown. Really? Who did what there? Well, I went with my friend Sarah. She bought a beautiful dress from a boutique. And I bought some new books. That sounds fun. What kind of books did you buy? I bought a few mystery novels, a cookbook, and a book about gardening. Interesting choices. Did you manage to get any good deals? Yes, we did. Sarah got her dress on sale, and I found a bargain on the cookbook. That's great. Were there a lot of people at the mall? Yes, it was pretty crowded. But everyone was wearing masks and keeping their distance, so it felt safe. That's good to hear. Did anything interesting happen while you were shopping? Yes, while we were there, a local band started playing music in the center of the mall. It was a nice surprise. That does sound like a nice surprise. Did you enjoy the music? We really did. They played a mix of pop and rock songs, and they were quite good. It sounds like you had a wonderful time. I should check out that mall soon. You definitely should, Charles. Maybe we could go together next time? That sounds like a great plan, Elizabeth. I'm looking forward to our shopping adventure. Me too, Charles. Let's make sure to plan it soon. Getting to know Dexter and Elizabeth, a journey of discovery. Hi Elizabeth, how are you today? Hello Dexter, I'm doing well, thank you. How about you? I'm doing great, thanks. Since we've recently met, I thought we could know more about each other. That sounds like a good idea. Where are you from, Dexter? I'm originally from London, England. I moved to the United States for work a few years ago. And you, Elizabeth? I was born and raised in New York. It's a bustling city. Do you miss London? Yes, I do, especially the historical buildings and the amazing food. But I'm also enjoying life here in the US. How about your family, Elizabeth? My parents live in Florida now, and my brother works in California. I visit them quite often. Do you have any siblings, Dexter? Yes, I have two sisters. They both live in London and I miss them a lot. I can imagine, family is so important. What's your favorite thing about living in the US? I love the diversity here. People from all walks of life coexist, which makes this place quite fascinating. What about you, what's your favorite thing about New York? The endless opportunities and the energy of the city. There's always something to do or see. What do you do in your free time, Dexter? I enjoy reading and hiking. The nearby mountains provide a great escape from the city life. How about you? I love painting and playing piano. It's a good way to relax and unwind. That sounds great. Music and art are indeed good stress busters. 
Have you always lived in New York? Yes, I was born and raised here, but I love traveling and have visited many different countries. How about you? Have you traveled to many places? Yes, I've been fortunate to visit several countries due to my work. I'm particularly fond of Italy for its rich culture and history. Italy is indeed a beautiful country. I visited Rome last year and it was an unforgettable experience. It certainly sounds like it. Speaking of experiences, I would love to hear more about your painting. I'd love to share more about it. Painting is a passion of mine and it's very therapeutic. How about your hobbies, Dexter? I find hiking to be very calming and rejuvenating. I guess we both have our unique ways of finding peace and tranquility. Yes, indeed. I'm glad we had this conversation, Dexter. It's nice to know more about you. Likewise, Elizabeth. I enjoyed our chat. Here's to many more. Absolutely, Dexter. Here's to many more. The fire in the abandoned building downtown, what happened? Hi Rebecca, did you hear about the fire downtown last night? Hello Albert, yes, I did. It was quite scary. It was in that old, abandoned building, wasn't it? Yes, it was. I saw it on the news. The firefighters were there all night trying to put out the flames. I can't believe it. That building has been empty for years. How do you think the fire started? The authorities are still investigating. They're not sure if it was an accident or if it was set on purpose. That's terrifying. I hope no one was hurt. Fortunately, the building was vacant and no one was injured. But it caused a lot of damage. That's a relief. I'm glad to hear no one was hurt. But what about the damage to the building? The building was already in poor condition. The fire caused even more damage and it may need to be demolished now. I suppose that's not a surprise. It's been neglected for so long. Do you think this could have been prevented? It's hard to say. If the building had been maintained or secured better, it might have made a difference. I agree. It's a shame that it ended up like this. What do you think will happen now? The city will likely inspect the damage and decide whether the building should be repaired or demolished. They'll also continue to investigate the cause of the fire. I hope they find out what caused it. It's important to prevent something like this from happening again. I completely agree, Rebecca. It's a serious issue that needs to be addressed. Absolutely. Well, it's good that we're aware of what happened. It's important to stay informed about our community. That's true. I'm glad we could discuss it. It's good to keep up with local news and understand what's happening in our city. Thank you, Albert. I always enjoy our conversations. They're not only interesting but also very informative. I'm glad to hear that, Rebecca. I feel the same way. I'll keep you updated if I hear any more news about the fire. I'd appreciate that, Albert. Have a great day. You too, Rebecca. Take care. Unlock the secrets of finding the best travel deals. Hello, Rebecca. I heard you're planning to travel. Where are you planning to go? Hi Albert, I'm planning to visit Spain. I'm really looking forward to it, but I need to find a reasonable ticket. That sounds exciting. Well, there are several ways to find good deals on flight tickets. Have you decided when you're going? I'm pretty flexible, but I'd prefer to travel during the off-peak season to save some money. That's a smart choice. Prices usually drop during the off-peak season. Have you considered booking your flight in advance? Yes, I have. But how far in advance should I book? Typically, 
booking a flight two to three months in advance can get you a good deal. However, keep an eye on flight prices as they can fluctuate. That's a good tip, Albert. I'll start checking the prices regularly. Another thing you can do is use flight comparison websites. They compare prices from different airlines and show you the cheapest options. I've heard about those, but I'm not sure which ones to use. Some popular ones are Skyscanner, Kayak, and Expedia. They're quite user-friendly. I'll give them a try. Is there anything else I should know? Yes, consider being flexible with your departure and arrival airports. Sometimes, nearby airports may offer cheaper flights. I'll keep that in mind. Thank you for all the tips, Albert. You're welcome, Rebecca. Another thing to consider is signing up for airline newsletters. They often send exclusive deals and discounts to their subscribers. That's a great idea. I'll definitely sign up for a few. Also, consider using a credit card that offers travel rewards. You can earn points for every purchase you make and then redeem those points for flights. I'll look into that. Thanks, Albert. You've been so helpful. I feel more confident about finding a good deal now. I'm glad to hear that, Rebecca. Remember, finding the best deal takes a bit of time and research, but it's worth it in the end. Enjoy your trip to Spain. Thanks, Albert. I'll keep all your advice in mind. I appreciate your help. It's my pleasure, Rebecca. If you have any other questions, feel free to ask. Safe travels. Thank you, Albert. I'm looking forward to my trip. Have a great day. The unexpected surprise, what happened to Rebecca's car? Hi Rebecca, I have something important to tell you. Hello Richard, sure, what is it? Do you remember you let me borrow your car yesterday? Yes, I remember. Is there something wrong with my car? No, no, your car is perfectly fine. It's just that something interesting happened while I was using it. Interesting? What do you mean? Well, while I was driving your car, I got a flat tire. Oh no, really? What did you do then? I called roadside assistance, and they came to help me change the tire. That's good to hear, Richard. But why is this an interesting story? Because while I was waiting for the roadside assistance, I met a man who was walking his dog. We started chatting, and it turns out he's a famous movie director. A movie director? Really? Which one? His name is David, and he directed some of the biggest blockbuster movies in Hollywood. That's amazing. But what's the connection with my car? Well, he noticed your car and complimented it. He said it's just the kind of car he was looking for to use in his next movie. My car in a movie? That's incredible. Yes, it is. And he gave me his contact details. He said he'd like to meet you and talk about it if you're interested. Wow, that's an unexpected surprise. I'd love to meet him. Great. I'll arrange a meeting then. It was quite an adventure, thanks to borrowing your car. Thank you, Richard. I'm excited to see where this leads. Me too, Rebecca. I'm glad I could share this exciting news with you. Thanks again, Richard. I'll look forward to hearing more about it. Do-It-Yourself, House Painting Adventures with Richard and Linda. Hi Linda, how are you today? Hello Richard, I'm doing well, thank you. How about you? I'm fantastic, thanks. I've been busy painting my house. Have you ever tried painting a house yourself? Oh, that's interesting. 
No, I haven't, but it seems like a big project. Did you paint the house yourself, Richard? Yes, I did. It was a bit challenging but also very satisfying. I learned a lot from the experience. That's impressive. How did you decide on the color? I wanted to give my house a fresh look. So, I chose a light blue color. It really brightens up the house. That sounds lovely. What materials did you need for the project? I needed a lot of things, like paint, brushes, a ladder, and protective sheets to cover the floor and furniture. It's important to prepare everything before starting. I see. Did you encounter any difficulties while painting? Well, painting the high parts of the house was a bit tricky. I had to use a ladder and be very careful not to fall. Safety first, of course. How long did it take you to finish painting? It took me a couple of weekends. I wanted to take my time to make sure everything was done properly. It sounds like a rewarding experience. Do you have any advice for someone who wants to paint their house? Certainly, it's best to take your time, especially if it's your first time painting a house. And don't be afraid to ask for help or advice. There are many resources online that can guide you. Thank you for the advice, Richard. Your experience makes me want to try painting my house too. That's great to hear, Linda. I'm sure you do a fantastic job. If you ever decide to paint your house, feel free to ask me for help. Thank you, Richard. I will keep that in mind. Congratulations on successfully painting your house. Thanks, Linda. I appreciate your kind words. Let's talk again soon. Exploring the Exotic Marvels of Morocco Hi Linda, I've been thinking about my next holiday destination. Hi Richard, that sounds exciting. Where are you planning to go? I'd like to go to Morocco for my holidays. I've heard a lot about its rich culture and history. Oh, that's a fantastic choice. Morocco has a lot to offer. Have you thought about what cities you want to visit? I've heard that Marrakesh and Casablanca are must-visit cities. Do you have any recommendations? Indeed, Marrakesh and Casablanca are beautiful. You should also consider visiting Fez and Chefchaouen. Fez is known for its historic Medina and Chefchaouen is famous for its blue-painted streets. That sounds great. I'll add them to my list. What about the food? I've heard Moroccan cuisine is incredible. You're absolutely right. Make sure to try traditional dishes like couscous, tagine, and pastilla. Also, their mint tea is very famous. I'm looking forward to trying all those dishes. What's the best time to visit Morocco? Morocco can be visited all year round, but the most pleasant time is during spring and fall when the temperatures are moderate. That's very useful, Linda. What about the local culture? Is there anything I need to know? Moroccans are generally very hospitable and friendly. Just remember to respect the local customs and traditions. Also, bargaining is very common in the markets, so don't be shy to negotiate prices. I appreciate your advice, Linda. I'm getting more excited about this trip. I'm sure you'll have an amazing time, Richard. Feel free to ask if you have more questions. Thanks a lot, Linda. I'll start planning my trip right away. You're welcome, Richard. I can't wait to hear all about your Moroccan adventure. Discovering cities and professions, an inspiring conversation between Richard and Linda. Hello Linda, how are you today? Hi Richard, I'm well, thank you. And you? I'm great. Thanks. I was wondering if we could chat about cities and professions. I'm interested in learning more about different jobs and where they are prevalent. That's a very interesting topic, Richard. I'd be happy to share what I know. 
Where do you want to start? Let's start with our own city. What professions are common here? Well, we live in a big city, so there's quite a range. We have many people working in business, technology, healthcare, and education, to name a few. Right, those are definitely prevalent. What about in smaller cities or towns? In smaller towns, you might find more people working in agriculture or local businesses. Teachers, doctors, and public service workers like police and firefighters are essential everywhere, of course. That makes sense. What about professions related to the arts? Those can be found in many places, but larger cities often have a more vibrant arts scene. They might have more opportunities for actors, musicians, artists, and so on. I see. And what about professions that are unique to certain cities? Great question. Some cities are known for certain industries. For example, Los Angeles is known for entertainment, while Silicon Valley is known for technology. Fascinating. It's interesting to see how cities and professions can be so interconnected. Indeed, the city's culture, resources, and history can influence the types of jobs that are common there. I appreciate your insights, Linda. This conversation has given me a lot to think about. I'm glad you found it interesting, Richard. It was a pleasure to discuss this topic with you. Thank you, Linda. I look forward to our next conversation. Me too, Richard. Take care. Barcode scanners, revolutionizing the world one code at a time. Hi Rebecca, how are you today? Hi Richard, I'm doing well. How about you? I'm fine too, thanks. I was reading about barcode scanners, and I thought it would be interesting to discuss. Sounds interesting. Could you explain to me what a barcode scanner is? Sure, a barcode scanner is a device that can read the information encoded in a barcode. This information is usually a unique identifier for a product or item. Oh, I see. So it's the device we see in supermarkets that scans our products? Exactly. Those are just one type of barcode scanner. There are many different types, but they all work in a similar way. That's cool. But what makes them so important? What benefits do they provide? Well, barcode scanners provide a lot of benefits. They can help to increase efficiency and accuracy in many fields. For instance, in retail, they help with inventory management, pricing, and checkout speed. Can you explain how they increase efficiency and accuracy? Of course. Since the information is stored electronically, the scanner can read it quickly and accurately. This reduces the chance of human error that can occur with manual data entry. I see. That sounds like a great advantage. How do they help with inventory management? With barcode scanners, inventory tracking becomes much easier. Each time a product is sold, its barcode is scanned, and the inventory system is updated automatically. This helps businesses know exactly how much of a product they have in stock at any time. That sounds very useful. Are there any other areas where barcode scanners are used? Yes, they are also used in logistics, healthcare, and even in libraries. For example, in healthcare, they can help track patient information and medication, ensuring that the right patient gets the right medication at the right time. It's fascinating how barcode scanners can provide such convenience and accuracy. They really are revolutionizing many sectors. I couldn't agree more, Rebecca. Barcode scanners are indeed a simple technology that has profound impacts. Thank you, Richard, for such an enlightening conversation. I've certainly learned a lot about barcode scanners. You're welcome, Rebecca. I'm glad I could share this knowledge with you. Have a great day. You too, Richard. Take care.
uncovering the legend of Maradona, soccer, the World Cup, and the hand of God. Hi Rebecca, have you ever heard about Maradona? Hello Albert, yes, of course. Maradona is a legendary soccer player, isn't he? That's correct. Diego Maradona is considered one of the greatest soccer players of all time. He was born in Argentina. I've heard about him playing in the World Cup. Can you tell me more? Yes, Maradona had some of his finest moments in the World Cup. He played in four World Cups for Argentina, and in 1986, he led the team to victory. That's impressive. I've heard about a controversial goal he scored in that tournament. What's the story behind that? Oh, you're referring to the hand of God goal. It happened during the quarter-final match against England in 1986. Maradona punched the ball into the net with his hand, and the referee allowed the goal. Why is it called the hand of God? It's because Maradona later claimed that the goal was scored a little with the head of Maradona and a little with the hand of God. This comment made headlines around the world, and hence, the goal has since been known as the hand of God. That's a fascinating story. Did this incident affect his career? It did stir controversy, but it didn't overshadow his skills and contributions to the game. In fact, in the same match, he scored what is often referred to as the goal of the century, an incredible solo goal where he dribbled past five England players to score. It sounds like he had quite the impact on the world of soccer. Absolutely. Maradona's style of play, his dribbling ability, and his tactical mind have influenced many players. His story is not only about his extraordinary talent, but also about his struggle with fame and personal issues, making him an incredibly complex and interesting figure in sports history. I feel like I've learned so much about Maradona today. Thank you for sharing, Albert. It was my pleasure, Rebecca. It's always exciting to discuss soccer and its legends. Do you have any other questions on this topic? Not for now, Albert. But I'm sure I'll have more the next time we chat. I look forward to it. I do as well, Rebecca. Until then, take care. You too, Albert. See you soon. The thrills of football and the excitement of the World Cup. Hi Rebecca, have you been following the World Cup? Hello Albert, yes, I have. It's such an exciting time. Do you like football? Absolutely. Football brings people together from all over the world. I love the energy of the World Cup. How about you? I feel the same. The World Cup is the pinnacle of football. It's incredible to see so many countries represented. I agree. The level of talent on display is outstanding. What's been your favorite match so far? I really enjoyed the match between Brazil and Germany. The level of skill and teamwork was impressive. What about you? That was a great match indeed. I enjoyed watching Argentina versus Spain. The strategies and tactics used were fascinating. Yes, the tactical side of football can be just as thrilling as the goals. Who are you rooting for in the tournament? I'm supporting England this year. I've always admired their style of play. And you? I'm rooting for France. I've followed them since I was a kid. It's been exciting to watch their journey in this World Cup. Both are strong teams. It will be interesting to see how they perform in the coming matches. Do you have a favorite player? I really admire Kylian Mbappe. His speed and skill are astonishing. Who's your favorite player? I have always been a fan of Lionel Messi. His ability to control the ball and create opportunities is exceptional. Yes, they're both great players. I think what makes the World Cup so special is seeing all these talented players compete on the same stage. That's very true. 
It's a chance for players and countries to show their skills and share their love for football. It's truly a global celebration. I couldn't agree more. Football and the World Cup bring so much joy and unity. I'm looking forward to the rest of the matches. Me too, Rebecca. Let's catch the next game together. That sounds great, Albert. I'm looking forward to it. A Delicious Dilemma, The Secret Behind Barbara's Cooking Hello Robert, I wanted to share something funny with you. My husband thinks I'm a wonderful cook. Hi Barbara. That's great to hear. And why do you find that funny? Well, because I don't actually do much cooking. I usually buy pre-made meals and just heat them up. That's interesting, Barbara. But perhaps he enjoys the way you present the food or the atmosphere you create during meal times. Maybe, Robert. I try to set a nice table and we often enjoy our meals together with some music in the background. See, Barbara. That's part of the magic of a good meal. It's not just about the food, but also about the environment and company. That's a nice perspective, Robert. But I still feel a bit guilty. Do you think I should tell him? If you're comfortable doing so, maybe you could tell him. Honesty is always the best policy in a relationship. Or perhaps you could start learning to cook and surprise him. That's a good idea, Robert. I've always wanted to learn to cook, but never found the time. I might take some cooking classes. That sounds like a plan, Barbara. And remember, cooking is a skill. With practice, you can definitely get better at it. Yes, you're right. It will also be a fun activity to do. Maybe my husband can join me in the cooking classes. That's an excellent idea, Barbara. It can be a great way to spend time together and create a new shared hobby. You've given me so much to think about, Robert. Thank you for your advice. You're welcome, Barbara. Enjoy your cooking journey, and don't forget to share some of your delicious creations with me. Of course, Robert. I will definitely share the fruits of our labor with you. I'm looking forward to it, Barbara. Have a great day. The Unexpected Adventure After Missing the First Bus Hi Barbara, you won't believe what happened to me this morning. Hello Robert. I'm curious now. What happened? I missed the first bus to work. I woke up late and rushed to the bus stop, but I was too late. Oh no, Robert. That must have been stressful. How did you manage to get to work? It was indeed, but something interesting happened. I decided to wait for the next bus and while waiting, I decided to have a cup of coffee from the cafe near the bus stop. That sounds nice. So, was your day better after the coffee? It was, Barbara. At the cafe, I met an old friend from college who I hadn't seen in years. We had a long chat and even decided to catch up more often. Wow, Robert. Missing the bus turned out to be a good thing after all. Yes, it did. I was reminded of how small surprises can make your day. That's true, Robert. It's important to remain positive even in unexpected situations. How was the rest of your day? It was quite good, Barbara. I managed to catch the next bus and reach work on time. I had a productive day at work, and the meeting with my old friend made it even better. That's great, Robert. I'm happy to hear that you had a good day, despite the initial hiccup. Thanks, Barbara. It was indeed an unexpected adventure. How was your day? My day was quite usual, Robert. But hearing about your day made it more interesting. I'm glad to hear that, Barbara. It just goes to show that every cloud has a silver lining. 
Absolutely, Robert. Thanks for sharing your story with me. You're welcome, Barbara. I'm looking forward to more unexpected adventures. Me too, Robert. Let's hope for the best. Behind the scenes of a best-selling novel, a candid conversation with David the author. Hi David, how are you today? Hello Barbara, I'm doing well, thank you. How about you? I'm fine, thanks. I've heard that you're writing a novel. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. I've been working on it for the past few months. That's exciting. Can you share what it's about? Well, it's a mystery novel set in a small town. The main character is a detective trying to solve a series of unusual events happening in the town. That sounds interesting. What inspired you to write this novel? I've always been a fan of mystery novels, and I wanted to create my own unique story. The idea of a small town with secrets appealed to me. I can't wait to read it. What's your process for writing a novel? I start by outlining the main plot and characters. Then, I work on each chapter, focusing on keeping the story engaging and suspenseful. It seems like a lot of work. How do you stay motivated? I try to write a little bit every day, and I always keep in mind the end goal, which is to create a captivating story for readers. That's a great approach. Do you have any tips for people who want to write their own novels? Definitely. Start with an idea you're passionate about, create an outline, and write a little every day. Don't worry about it being perfect at first, you can always edit later. Those are helpful tips, David. When do you expect to finish your novel? I'm aiming to finish the first draft in the next couple of months. After that, I'll spend some time editing and refining the story. That's wonderful, David. I wish you the best of luck with your novel. I'm sure it will be a success. Thank you, Barbara. I appreciate your support and kind words. Behind the scenes of the stock market. Hi Barbara, how have you been? Hello David, I've been well, thank you. How about you? I'm good, thanks. I heard that you started working for a stockbroker. How's that going? It's been a fascinating experience, David. I've been learning a lot about how the stock market works. That sounds interesting. Can you explain a little bit about what a stockbroker does? Sure, a stockbroker is a professional who buys and sells stocks and other securities for both retail and institutional clients through a stock exchange or over the counter in return for a fee or commission. I see. That seems like a very important job. What's your role in the company? I work as an assistant to the stockbroker. I help in researching the stock market, preparing reports, and handling client communications. That must be a lot of work. But it also sounds like a great opportunity to learn. Yes, it's quite challenging, but also very rewarding. I get to be involved in exciting financial transactions and help our clients make informed investment decisions. Do you have any advice for someone interested in investing in the stock market? Well, I'm not a financial advisor, but I would say it's important to do your research, understand your financial goals, and be prepared for the risks involved. Also, it can be helpful to work with a professional, like a stockbroker. Thank you for the advice. Barbara. Your job sounds very exciting. I might consider investing in the stock market myself. I'm glad to hear that, David. Remember, it's always a good idea to get professional advice before making any investment decisions. Absolutely, Barbara. Thanks for the insightful conversation. I hope we can chat more about this in the future. Of course, David. I'm always here if you have any more questions. Have a great day.
My little house and my big family. Hi, how was your day? Hi, my day was good. How about you? I'm good too. I was thinking about my small house and big family. Oh, that sounds interesting. How many people are in your family? There are 10 people in my family, including me. Wow, that's a big family. Who are the members of your family? I have my parents, three brothers, two sisters, and my grandparents. That's nice. Do you all live in the same small house? Yes, we do. It's a bit crowded, but we love being together. I can imagine. What do you like most about having a big family? I like that there is always someone to talk to and play with. That's true. Do you have any family traditions? Yes, we have a big family dinner every Sunday night. That sounds lovely. What kind of food do you usually have at the dinner? We have different dishes every time, but my mom's pasta is always a favorite. I love pasta too. Do you help with the cooking? Yes, sometimes I help my mom in the kitchen. I like to learn new recipes. That's great. Do your siblings help as well? Yes, we all take turns helping with the cooking and cleaning. It's nice that everyone contributes. Do you have any pets? Yes, we have a dog named Max. He's like another family member. I love dogs. How do you manage to take care of him with so many people in the house? We all take turns walking him and feeding him. It's not too hard. That's good to hear. I think having a big family is wonderful. I agree. I'm very lucky to have them. How about your family? My family is smaller, but I still love them very much. That's great. Family is important, no matter the size. I agree. Well, it was nice talking to you about your family. Thank you. I enjoyed our conversation too. Have a great day. You too. Goodbye. Goodbye, see you later. Human Anatomy Hi Bob, I want to learn about human anatomy. Can you help me with that? Hello Alice, sure. I'd be happy to help. Human anatomy is the study of the body and its parts. That sounds interesting. What are the main parts of the human body? The human body has many parts. Some of the main ones are the head, arms, legs, and the torso, which is the middle part of the body. I see. Can you tell me about the head? Of course. The head has the brain, which is the control center of the body. It also has the eyes, ears, nose, and mouth. What about the arms and legs? The arms and legs are also called limbs. The arms have hands at the end, and the legs have feet. We use our arms and hands to hold things and our legs and feet to walk. That's clear. And what's inside the torso? The torso contains many important organs, such as the heart, lungs, and stomach. The heart pumps blood, the lungs help us breathe, and the stomach helps us digest food. I've heard about bones. What can you tell me about them? Bones are the hard parts that make up the skeleton, which gives the body its shape and support. There are 206 bones in an adult human body. Wow, that's a lot of bones. How do the parts of the body work together? The different parts of the body work together like a team. For example, the muscles help us move, the heart and lungs provide oxygen and nutrients, and the brain sends signals to control everything. That's amazing. How can I learn more about human anatomy? 
You can read books, watch videos, or take a class to learn more about human anatomy. It's a fascinating subject. Thank you, Bob. I'll look for more information. I appreciate your help. You're welcome, Alice. If you have any more questions, just let me know. Enjoy learning about human anatomy. Thanks, Bob. Have a great day. You too, Alice. Take care. Gas station. Hello. How are you today? Hi. I'm good, thank you. How about you? I'm fine, thanks. I need to go to the gas station to get some fuel for my car. Do you know where the nearest one is? Yes, there's a gas station just two blocks away from here. Turn right at the next intersection and you'll see it. Great, thank you. I'm new to this area, so I'm still learning where everything is. No problem, happy to help. Do you need directions to any other places around here? Actually, I'm also looking for a grocery store to buy some food. Do you know where I can find one? Sure. There's a big supermarket just five minutes away by car. After you leave the gas station, continue straight for two blocks, then turn left. You'll see the supermarket on your right. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your help. You're welcome. If you need any more help, feel free to ask. I've lived in this neighborhood for a long time, so I know my way around. That's very kind of you. I will definitely ask if I need any more assistance. Are there any good restaurants around here that you recommend? Oh, there are many. If you like pizza, there's a fantastic pizza place just across the street from the supermarket. They have the best pizza in town. I love pizza. I'll have to try it out. What about a good place for coffee or breakfast? There's a cozy little cafe a few blocks away from the pizza place. They have great coffee and delicious pastries. It's the perfect spot for breakfast or an afternoon snack. That sounds lovely. I'll be sure to check it out. Thanks for all the recommendations. My pleasure. Enjoy exploring the neighborhood. I will. Have a great day. You too. Good luck with your errands. Unveiling the Urban Canvas, Graffiti in the Metro and the City Hey Emma, how's your day going? Hi Jack, I'm doing well, thanks. And you? I'm doing fine. Did you notice the new graffiti in the Metro? Yes, I did. It's quite eye-catching. What are your thoughts on graffiti, Jack? Well, Emma, I think graffiti is an intriguing form of art. It gives artists a chance to express themselves in public spaces. I agree, Jack. It can certainly add color and character to otherwise dull spaces, like a metro station. However, isn't it considered illegal in many places? That's a good point, Emma. Yes, unauthorized graffiti is often viewed as vandalism and is illegal. It can lead to fines or even imprisonment. It's a bit of a paradox, isn't it? On one hand, it's a creative expression, on the other hand, it's seen as a crime. Absolutely, it's a fine line between art and vandalism. What do you think about graffiti being used to address social issues? I think it can be a powerful tool for raising awareness and sparking conversations about important topics. I've seen some graffiti pieces in the city that depict global warming, for instance. Yes, it's amazing how a piece of art can convey such powerful messages. Graffiti can definitely be a voice for the voiceless. True. But there should be some rules, I guess. Artistic expression shouldn't harm public or private property. I completely agree, Emma. Maybe cities can designate specific areas for artists to create their graffiti. 
That way, it can be appreciated without causing any harm. That sounds like a balanced solution, Jack. It's a pleasure discussing this with you. Likewise, Emma. Conversations like this make me appreciate the complex beauty of our urban landscapes. Indeed, Jack. I look forward to more enlightening conversations with you. Have a great day. Day of the Dead Festival in Mexico. Hi Mary. I recently heard about a unique festival in Mexico called the Day of the Dead. Do you know anything about it? Hi James. Yes, I do. The Day of the Dead, or Dia de los Muertos in Spanish, is a traditional Mexican holiday that celebrates and remembers loved ones who have passed away. That sounds interesting. How do they celebrate it? It's a colorful and festive event. Families create altars, or ofrendas, in their homes to honor their deceased loved ones. These altars are decorated with flowers, candles, photos of the deceased, and their favorite foods and drinks. It sounds like a beautiful tribute. Is there any significance to the items placed on the altar? Yes, there is. Each item has a specific meaning. For example, marigold flowers or sempasakil are believed to guide the spirits to the altar. Candles are lit to welcome them, and the food is an offering for the spirits. That's quite meaningful. Are there any other customs associated with the Day of the Dead? Absolutely. One popular tradition is the creation of sugar skulls or calicas. These are colorful, decorated skulls made of sugar, which symbolize death and rebirth. I've seen pictures of those. They're very vibrant and artistic. Are there any special foods or drinks during this festival? Yes, there are. Pan de Muerto, or Bread of the Dead, is a sweet bread that's commonly made for this occasion. Also, a drink called Atoll, which is a traditional hot corn and masa drink, is often consumed. It's fascinating how the Day of the Dead seems to mix celebration with remembrance. Is this festival only celebrated in Mexico? The Day of the Dead is primarily a Mexican holiday, but it's also recognized in other cultures around the world, especially those with a large Mexican community. The United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, or UNESCO, has even recognized it as an intangible cultural heritage of humanity. That's amazing. I'd love to experience the Day of the Dead Festival someday. It seems like a beautiful way to remember and honor our loved ones. I agree, James. It's a unique celebration that embraces death as a natural part of life, which is quite different from many other cultures. Thank you for sharing, Mary. I've learned so much about the Day of the Dead today. You're welcome, James. I'm glad I could share this with you. If you have any other questions about it, feel free to ask. Will do, Mary. Thank you again, and have a great day. You too, James. Take care. The Running of the Bulls Festival in Spain Hello Mary, I've heard you went to Spain last summer. Did you by any chance attend the Running of the Bulls Festival? Hi James, yes, I did. It's a unique and exciting event that happens in the city of Pamplona every year. That's interesting. Can you tell me more about the festival? What exactly happens there? Sure, I'd love to. The festival is called San Fermin, and the running of the bulls is just one part of it. It's an event where people run in front of a group of bulls that have been let loose on a course of a sectioned-off subset of the town streets. That sounds dangerous. Why do people do it? It's a tradition that dates back to the 14th century. Initially, it was a practical thing, the bulls had to be moved from the city outskirts to the bullring where they would be fought in the afternoon. Youngsters would jump among them to show off their bravado. Oh, I see. So, it turned into a festival over time. What else happens during the festival? 
Apart from the bull runs, there are many other activities like parades, fireworks, and traditional sports. It's a week-long festival, and the whole city is decorated with red and white, which are the colors of the event. That sounds like quite a spectacle. But, aren't there any safety concerns during the running of the bulls? Absolutely, it can be very dangerous, and there have been injuries and even deaths in the past. Before the event starts, there are safety instructions given, and you must be over 18 to participate. It's also advised not to participate if you have been drinking. That makes sense. It's important to be careful. Did you participate in the running? No, I didn't. I watched from a safe distance. It was thrilling enough just to be a spectator. I can imagine. It must have been an unforgettable experience. Is there anything else you'd like to share about the festival? Just that it's a huge part of the local culture. The people of Pamplona take great pride in hosting the San Fermin Festival. While the running of the bulls might be the most famous event, the entire festival is a celebration of the city's heritage. It sounds incredible, Mary. I'd love to see it for myself someday. Thanks for sharing your experience. You're welcome, James. If you ever decide to go, I'm sure you'll have a great time. Just remember to stay safe. Holiday Hi, do you have any plans for the holiday? Yes, I'm going on a trip with my family. What about you? I'm going to visit my grandparents in the countryside. Where are you going? We're going to the beach. I'm excited to swim and play in the sand. That sounds like fun. What are you going to pack for the trip? I'm going to bring my swimsuit, some sunscreen, and a hat to protect my face from the sun. That's a good idea. What else are you going to do on the trip? We're going to go to some restaurants and try different kinds of food. I also want to go on a boat ride. That sounds like a great adventure. What do you like to do on holidays? I like to relax and spend time with my family. What about you? I like to read books and go for walks. Thanks for talking about your holiday plans. You're welcome. It was nice talking with you. Gas Station Hi Bob, how are you today? Hello Alice, I'm good, thank you. How about you? I'm fine too, thanks. I wanted to ask you, how do you buy fuel at a gas station in English? It's quite easy, Alice. When you go to a gas station, you can simply say, I would like to buy some fuel, please. I see. And how do I ask for a specific amount of fuel or money? You can say, could I have $20 worth of gas, please, or please give me 10 liters of fuel. That's clear. What if I want to pay with a credit card or cash? You can ask, can I pay with my credit card, or do you accept cash? Great. And if I need help at the gas station, what can I say? You can ask, excuse me, could you help me with the pump, please? Thanks, Bob. That's very helpful. What about when I need to find a gas station? What should I ask? You can ask someone, excuse me, can you tell me where the nearest gas station is? Perfect. And if I want to know if the gas station has a restroom or a store? You can ask, does this gas station have a restroom, or is there a store here? Thank you, Bob. You're a great help. Do you have any other tips for me? Just remember to be polite and use, please, and, thank you, when asking for help or making requests. And don't worry, most people are happy to help. Thanks a lot, Bob. I feel more confident now. I'll keep practicing. You're welcome, Alice. If you have any more questions, feel free to ask. Good luck with your English.
Thank you, Bob. Have a nice day. You too, Alice. Take care. At the bakery. Hi, how are you? Hi, I'm good, thank you. How about you? I'm fine too. Do you want to go to the bakery today? Yes, I would love to. What do you want to eat there? I want to eat a chocolate cake and drink a milky coffee. What about you? I would like to have a grape cookie with a cup of coffee. That sounds nice. We can also meet our friends there. Yes, it's a great idea. We can talk and have fun together. Do you know if anyone has a birthday soon? I think Sarah's birthday is next week. We can celebrate it at the bakery. That's perfect. We can surprise her with a cake and a small party. She will be very happy. Let's invite our other friends too. Yes, let's make a list of who we want to invite. We can invite Tom, Lucy, and Mike. Do you want to invite anyone else? Let's also invite Emma and Sam. They are good friends with Sarah. Great, I will call them and tell them about the surprise party. Thank you. Let's meet at the bakery at 4 p.m. today. Perfect. See you later. Goodbye. Goodbye, see you. Gas Station 2 Hello, how are you? Hi, I'm good, thank you. How about you? I'm fine, thanks. Are you at the gas station now? Yes, I am. I need to get some gas for my car. What kind of gas do you need? I need petrol. My car uses petrol. How much petrol does your car need? I think it needs about 30 liters. How much does petrol cost now? It costs $1.5 per liter. That's not too expensive. No, it's not. I'm happy with the price. How do you pay for the petrol? I use my credit card. It's very easy. That's good. Do you like your car? Yes, I do. It's a nice car. What color is your car? My car is red. Red is a nice color. Yes, I like it a lot. Do you drive to work every day? No, I take the bus to work. Why do you take the bus? It's cheaper and better for the environment. That's true. How long does it take to get to work? It takes about 30 minutes. That's not too long. No, it's not. I can read a book or listen to music on the bus. That sounds nice. What time do you go to work? I go to work at 8 o'clock in the morning. What time do you finish work? I finish work at 5 o'clock in the evening. Do you like your job? Yes, I do. I have a good boss and nice co-workers. That's great. What do you do for fun? I like to watch movies and play soccer. I like to watch movies, too. What is your favorite movie? My favorite movie is The Lion King. I like that movie, too. It's a good story. Yes, it is. Do you have a favorite movie? My favorite movie is Toy Story. That's a fun movie. I like it, too. I'm glad you like it. Do you have a favorite soccer team? Yes, I do. My favorite team is Barcelona. 
I like Barcelona, too. They play good soccer. Yes, they do. It's fun to watch them play. I agree. Well, it was nice talking to you. Yes, it was nice talking to you, too. Have a great day. You too, have a great day. Goodbye. Goodbye. A discussion on the Harbin Ice and Snow Festival in China. Hello Mary, have you ever heard about the Harbin Ice and Snow Festival in China? Hi James, I've heard about it, but I don't know much. Can you tell me more? Absolutely, it's one of the biggest winter festivals in the world. It takes place in Harbin, a city in northeastern China, every year. It usually starts in January and lasts for about a month, but the exact dates can vary depending on the weather. That sounds interesting. What happens during the festival? The festival features massive ice and snow sculptures. Artists from all over the world come to create these sculptures. Some of them are small, but others can be as tall as a building. Wow, that must be a sight to see. How do they make these sculptures? They use blocks of ice that they take from the Songhua River, which freezes over in the winter. For the snow sculptures, they pack snow into blocks. Then, they carve these blocks into different shapes. That's fascinating. What else can visitors do at the festival? Besides admiring the sculptures, visitors can enjoy ice lantern shows, ice skating, and other winter activities. There are also ice hotels where you can stay. Ice hotels? That sounds cold. Yes, it does. But don't worry, the beds are made of ice but are covered with warm reindeer skins, blankets, and sleeping bags. That's a relief. Is there anything special about the festival's location, Harbin? Indeed, Harbin is known as the Ice City. It's famous for its extremely cold winters, which makes it the perfect place for this festival. Harbin also has strong influences from Russia because it's close to the Russian border. You can see this influence in the city's architecture and food. That's very interesting. I'd love to go there someday. It's definitely worth a visit. Just remember to dress warmly. I'll keep that in mind. Thanks for telling me about the Harbin Ice and Snow Festival, James. I learned a lot. You're welcome, Mary. I'm glad I could share this with you. If you have any other questions about it, feel free to ask. Thank you, James. I appreciate it. Have a great day. You too, Mary. Take care. Thrilling adventure in the Amazon rainforest, you won't believe what happened. Hi Emma, did I ever tell you about the time my friend Isabella and I had an incredible adventure in the Amazon rainforest? Hi Jack, no, you didn't. I would love to hear about it. How did you end up in the Amazon? It started as a backpacking trip. We both had always wanted to explore South America, and the Amazon rainforest was on top of our list. It's one of the most diverse ecosystems on the planet. That sounds amazing. But I can imagine it might be a bit dangerous. Yes, it can be. We had to prepare well and get all the necessary vaccinations. And we also hired a local guide to help us navigate through the dense forest. That seems sensible. So, what happened in the forest? One day, while we were trekking, we encountered a group of capybaras, the world's largest rodents. They were surprisingly friendly. Capybaras? That must have been a sight. What else did you see? We saw many birds, insects, and other wildlife. But the most exciting part was when we came across an ancient, abandoned temple hidden deep within the forest. A temple in the Amazon? That's incredible. What was it like? It was partly covered in vines and moss. 
It looked like it hadn't been disturbed for centuries. We couldn't believe our eyes. That sounds like something out of an adventure movie. Did you go inside? Yes, we did, with our guide leading the way. Inside, there were old stone carvings and what looked like an ancient map. That's astounding. How did you feel in that moment? We were both in awe. It was a reminder of how old and rich the history of that region is. It sounds like an unforgettable experience. Thanks for sharing, Jack. You're welcome, Emma. I'm glad I could share our adventure with you. Thank you, Jack. Your stories are always so exciting. I'm happy you enjoy them, Emma. There's always an adventure to be had if you're willing to look for it. I'll remember that, Jack. Thanks again. No problem, Emma. If you have any more questions about it, feel free to ask. Enjoy your day. Thank you, Jack. You too, have a great day. Sharing the experience of giving a conference in London. Hi Mary, how are you doing today? Hi James, I'm doing well. Thank you. How about you? I'm good, thank you. I just got back from London, where I gave a conference. It was quite an experience. That sounds exciting. What was the conference about? It was about advancements in artificial intelligence and its implications for the future. I had the opportunity to meet some of the leading minds in the field. That's fascinating. What was your presentation about? My presentation was about the ethical considerations in AI development. It's a topic I feel strongly about and was thrilled to share my thoughts with a receptive audience. I can imagine it was well received. How did you prepare for it? Well, I had to do a lot of research. I also rehearsed my speech numerous times to ensure I was confident and clear in my delivery. Preparation is key when it comes to public speaking. Absolutely, I agree. How did you feel giving the presentation? I was a bit nervous at first, but once I got started, I felt more comfortable. It's always inspiring to share your knowledge and engage in discussions with people who share similar interests. That's true. How was the response from the audience? It was very positive. Many people came up to me afterward to discuss my presentation further. Some even expressed interest in collaborating on future projects. That must have felt rewarding. How did you find London? London is a great city, filled with history and culture. I also enjoyed the food and the hospitality of the people. I would definitely love to go back. I'm sure it was a memorable trip. Did you have time for sightseeing? Yes, I did. I visited the British Museum, the Tower of London, and even took a ride on the London Eye. The views of the city from up there were amazing. That sounds like a fantastic experience. Any tips for someone planning to give a conference? Yes, definitely. Start preparing early, understand your audience, and be passionate about your topic. And of course, take some time to enjoy the city you're in. Great advice, James. Thank you for sharing your experience. My pleasure, Mary. It's always good to share experiences and learn from each other. Absolutely, I couldn't agree more. Have a great day, James. The power of actions, reaping what you sow. Hi Emma, have you ever heard the phrase, you reap what you sow? Hello Jack, yes, I've heard it before. It means that our actions determine the results we get, right? Exactly. It's like planting seeds. If you plant apple seeds, you can't expect oranges to grow. The same applies to our actions and behavior. That's a good analogy. So, if we're kind, helpful, and respectful to others, we can expect the same in return? Yes, generally speaking. 
But it's also important to remember that this concept isn't a guarantee. Sometimes, despite our good actions, we might face challenges or difficult people. That's true, Jack. But even then, doesn't maintaining a positive attitude and approach benefit us in the long run? Absolutely. It helps build character and resilience. Plus, our actions often influence the people around us. If we're consistently kind and respectful, others may start to behave the same way. I like that perspective. I guess it also means that we should be mindful of our actions, even when we're upset or frustrated. Yes, because negative actions can also have consequences. If we're constantly rude or inconsiderate, we're likely to lose friends and miss opportunities. That makes sense. Our actions truly do shape our relationships and experiences. It's like a mirror reflecting our behavior. I couldn't have said it better, Emma. The, you reap what you sow, concept is a reminder for us to be mindful of our actions and to strive to do good. I completely agree, Jack. It encourages accountability and fosters empathy. It's a principle I want to incorporate more in my daily life. Me too, Emma. And remember, every day is a new opportunity to plant seeds of positivity. Indeed, Jack. Let's do our best to sow good seeds. Bearded Lady Goes Viral on Social Media Hi Elizabeth, have you been online today? Hello Charles, yes, I have. Why do you ask? There's something trending on social media that has caught my attention. It's about a woman with a beard who is embracing her uniqueness and has gained a lot of followers. Oh, I think I saw something about that. She seems to be challenging conventional beauty standards and promoting body positivity, isn't she? Yes, that's correct. Her message seems to be resonating with a lot of people. That's a powerful message. I think it's great that she is using her platform to spread positivity and acceptance. I agree. Social media can sometimes focus too much on perfection. It's refreshing to see someone who is genuine and authentic. Absolutely, Charles. It's important to remember that everyone is unique in their own way, and it's our differences that make us special. Yes, and it's courageous of her to share her story. She might be helping others who are also struggling with acceptance. I believe she is. By sharing her story, she's showing others that it's okay to be different and to love yourself just the way you are. It's great to see the positive impact she's having. But I wonder how she deals with negative comments or criticism. I'm sure it's not easy. But it seems like she's focusing on the positive and not letting negativity bring her down. That's a lesson we could all learn from. Definitely. It's a reminder to be kind to one another and respect our differences. Yes, Charles. After all, everyone has their own story and struggles. What we see on social media is just a small part of a person's life. True, Elizabeth. It's important not to judge others based on appearances. And it's equally important to be kind to ourselves and embrace our own uniqueness. I couldn't agree more, Charles. This discussion has been enlightening. It certainly has, Elizabeth. I'm glad we had this chat. Me too, Charles. It's always nice to learn from each other. Both Charles and Elizabeth agree that the conversation has given them a fresh perspective on body positivity and the power of social media in creating awareness. They look forward to more such discussions and learning experiences. Revolutionizing your home, unveiling innovations in kitchen design. Hi Elizabeth, how are you? Hello Charles, I'm fine, thank you. How about you? I'm doing well, thanks. I was just reading an article about how innovations in kitchen design are revolutionizing the way we live. Have you noticed these changes? Absolutely, Charles. 
The advances in technology and design have made a significant impact on our kitchens. For example, smart appliances are becoming increasingly popular. That's true. I've seen refrigerators that can track your groceries and ovens that can be controlled from your phone. Exactly, Charles. And it's not just about the technology. The design and layout of kitchens have also evolved. Open plan kitchens that merge with the living space have become quite trendy. I see. That certainly fosters a more social cooking experience. I've also noticed a trend towards more sustainable kitchen designs. Absolutely. There's a growing focus on using eco friendly materials and energy efficient appliances. Many people are also growing their own herbs in indoor kitchen gardens. That's fascinating. It seems like the kitchen has truly become the heart of the home. What other innovations are making a splash in kitchen design? Another popular trend is the integration of advanced storage solutions. These can range from pull out spice racks to custom built pantry organizers. It's all about maximizing space and keeping things tidy. That sounds incredibly practical. It's clear that these innovations are changing the way we interact with our kitchens. Absolutely, Charles. And as technology continues to advance, I believe we'll see even more exciting developments in the future. I can't wait to see what's next. This conversation has certainly opened my eyes to the importance of kitchen design. I'm glad to hear that, Charles. It's always exciting to see how design can improve our everyday lives. Indeed, Elizabeth. I'll definitely keep an eye out for the latest kitchen design trends. Sounds like a plan, Charles. It's been a pleasure discussing this with you. Likewise, Elizabeth. Have a great day. You too, Charles. Take care. In this conversation, Charles and Elizabeth explored the innovations revolutionizing kitchen design. From smart appliances and open plan layouts to sustainable materials and advanced storage solutions, they discussed the many ways these trends are enhancing our everyday lives. Songkran Festival, Thailand. Hi Patricia, how are you? Hello John, I'm doing well. How about you? I'm good, thank you. You know, I was reading about different festivals around the world, and I came across the Songkran Festival in Thailand. Have you heard about it? Yes, I have. It's a very popular festival in Thailand. Do you want to know more about it? Yes, please. What's the festival about? Songkran is the traditional Thai New Year's festival. It's usually celebrated in mid-April, from the 13th to the 15th. The festival is known for its water fights. People throw water on each other as a symbol of purification and washing away the sins and bad luck. That sounds like a lot of fun. Is there anything else that people do during the festival? Yes, there are many other traditions. For example, people visit temples and make merit by offering food to the Buddhist monks. They also clean their homes and their Buddha images with scented water. That's very interesting. So, it's not just about the water fights, but also about religious practices and traditions. Exactly. The Songkran festival is a time for family and religious observances. Many Thai people also use this time to reflect on the past year and to make resolutions for the new year. I see. I'd love to experience this festival one day. Is there anything else I should know if I want to participate? Well, remember that Songkran is about respect and goodwill. While it's fun to join in the water fights, it's also important to respect the local customs and traditions. For instance, you should dress modestly and avoid throwing water after sunset. That's good advice. I'll keep that in mind. Thank you, Patricia. You're welcome, John. I'm sure you'd enjoy the Songkran Festival. It's a wonderful celebration of Thai culture and traditions. I'm looking forward to it. Thanks again for telling me about it.
Have a great day, Patricia. You too, John. Enjoy your day. Meet the Neighborhood, a journey through friendship and community. Hi Emma, how are you today? Hello Jack, I'm doing well, thank you. How about you? I'm great, thanks. I was thinking, we've never really discussed our neighbors. They're an important part of our community. You're right, Jack. We interact with our neighbors quite often. It's nice to know who's living around us. Definitely. Let's start with the Smith family next door. They're very friendly, aren't they? Absolutely. Mr. and Mrs. Smith are always welcoming and their kids, Tom and Lucy, are quite polite. They often help with community events. Yes, they're very involved. How about the elderly couple across the street, the Johnsons? Mr. and Mrs. Johnson are wonderful. Even though they're older, they're very active in the neighborhood. And they have the most beautiful garden. I agree. Their flowers are always a pleasure to see. Then we have the young couple, the Parkers, who just moved in last month. Yes, they seem very nice. They've just started to settle in. I think we should invite them for a community meet and greet. That's a great idea, Emma. We could also introduce them to everyone else in the neighborhood. Speaking of which, we also have the Rodriguez family. They have been here for a long time. Their son, Miguel, is in the same class as my little brother. I've met them a couple of times. They're very warm and friendly. Their son is a good student, I've heard. Yes, he is. We should also mention the neighborhood pets. They're part of the community too. Of course. The Browns have that cute dog, Bella. And the Wilsons have a cat named Fluffy. Our neighborhood is diverse and vibrant. Each neighbor contributes to its charm. We're lucky to have such good neighbors. We really are. It's important to appreciate our neighbors and help each other out when needed. We share a community, after all. Yes, we do. Let's continue to build strong relationships with our neighbors and make our community an even better place to live. I completely agree, Emma. And I look forward to our next neighborhood event. Me too, Jack. It's going to be great. Through their conversation, Jack and Emma discover how much they appreciate their neighbors and the vibrant community they share. They realize that every individual and family brings their unique charm to the neighborhood, enriching it and making it a better place to live. Behind the scenes of a TV news program. Hi Emma, how are you? Hi Jack, I'm good, thank you. How about you? I'm well, thanks. I've always been curious about what it's like to be a TV news anchor. Could you tell me a bit about it? Of course, Jack. As a news anchor, my primary job is to present the news in an impartial and clear manner. I read the news from a teleprompter, conduct live interviews, and occasionally report from the field. That sounds like a lot of work. How do you prepare for a news broadcast? The preparation starts much before the broadcast. I work with a team of journalists who gather and verify the news. Once the news stories are finalized, the scriptwriters write the news scripts for me to read on air. Do you ever get nervous before going on air? Yes, Jack, even with years of experience, I still get a bit nervous before live broadcasts. But I believe a bit of nervousness keeps me alert and helps me perform better. That's interesting. Have you ever made a mistake on air? Everyone makes mistakes, Jack, and news anchors are no exception. I've had my share of bloopers. But the important thing is to keep your composure and move on. I understand. What do you like most about being a news anchor? 
The most rewarding part is the ability to inform the public about important events. It's a responsibility I take very seriously. And what do you find most challenging? The most challenging part is dealing with breaking news. Things can change rapidly, and we have to adapt quickly. It sounds like a fascinating job, Emma. Thank you for sharing your experiences with me. You're welcome, Jack. I'm glad you found it interesting. I certainly did. Keep up the good work, Emma. Thank you, Jack. I'll do my best. Through their conversation, Jack gets a peek behind the scenes of a TV news program and gains a deeper appreciation for the hard work that goes into each broadcast. As for Emma, she continues to strive for excellence in her role as a news anchor, committed to delivering reliable and timely news to the public. Discussing Loy Krathong and Ipung Festivals in Thailand Hi Patricia, how are you doing? Hello John, I'm well. How about you? I'm good, thanks. I've been doing some research on festivals in Thailand, and I came across Loy Krathong and Ipeng. Have you heard about them? Yes, I have. They are beautiful and deeply cultural events celebrated in Thailand. Would you like to know more about them? Absolutely. Could you explain what Loy Krathong is all about? Sure, John. Loy Krathong is a festival celebrated annually throughout Thailand. Loy means to float, and Krathong is a small raft made from banana leaves. People float these krathongs on a river, canal, or a pond, making a wish as they do so. That sounds beautiful. Is there a specific reason why people float these krathongs? Yes, there is. The act of floating away the candlelit krathongs symbolizes letting go of all one's hatred, anger, and defilements. People also believe that this will bring good luck and fulfill their wishes. That's fascinating. And what about Ipeng? Is it similar to Loy Krathong? They are similar in some ways, but they have different traditions. Ipeng, also known as the Lantern Festival, involves releasing thousands of lit lanterns into the sky. It is a sight to behold. That must be a mesmerizing sight. Why do people release lanterns into the sky? It's a way to pay respects to Buddha. Also, it's believed that if you make a wish when you release the lantern, it will come true when the lantern disappears from sight. These festivals sound like a great way to experience Thai culture. When do they occur? Loy Krathong and Ipung are celebrated on the evening of the full moon of the 12th month in the traditional Thai lunar calendar, which usually falls in November. I'd love to experience these festivals someday. I'm sure you'd love it, John. They are not just about the beauty and the lights, these festivals bring communities together and represent a time for self-reflection and renewal. Thank you for sharing this, Patricia. I'll definitely add these to my bucket list. You're welcome, John. You won't regret it. Experiencing a different culture's traditions is truly enriching. Indeed, it is. Thank you again, Patricia. Have a great day. You too, John. Take care. Twenty must-know questions and answers for your luxurious stay at the Hotel City. Hello, do you have any rooms available for tonight? Yes, we do have rooms available. Would you like a single or a double room? Is breakfast included in the price? Yes, a continental breakfast is included in the room price. What are the check-in and check-out times? Check-in is from 3 p.m. and check-out is by 11 a.m. Do you offer room service? Yes, we offer 24-hour room service. Is there Wi-Fi in the rooms? Yes, all rooms have free high-speed Wi-Fi. Do you have a gym in the hotel? 
Yes, we have a fully equipped gym that's open 24-7 for our guests. What type of amenities do you provide in the rooms? All rooms come with a flat screen TV, mini fridge, kettle, hairdryer, and toiletries. Is there a restaurant in the hotel? Yes, we have a fine dining restaurant and a cafe in our hotel. Can I have an extra bed in the room? Yes, we can arrange an extra bed for a small additional fee. Is the hotel pet friendly? I'm sorry, but our hotel doesn't allow pets. Is there parking available at the hotel? Yes, we provide complimentary parking for our guests. Do you offer laundry service? Yes, we do offer laundry and dry cleaning services. Is there a spa in the hotel? Yes, our hotel has a luxurious spa offering a variety of treatments. Can you arrange a taxi to the airport? Absolutely, we can arrange a taxi for you. What is the cancellation policy? You can cancel your booking free of charge up to 48 hours before your check-in date. Do you provide any special services for honeymooners? Yes, we offer a special package that includes a romantic dinner, champagne, and a room upgrade if available. Are there any tourist attractions near the hotel? Yes, we're conveniently located near several popular tourist spots. Can I request a room with a view? Certainly, we can arrange a room with a view depending on availability. Do you have any special offers or packages? Yes, we have several packages available. I can provide you with more information if you're interested. Can you recommend a good restaurant nearby? Absolutely, there are several excellent restaurants within walking distance of our hotel. Booking a luxurious London hotel and planning a family trip. Hi Jennifer, I wanted to share some exciting news with you. Hi Michael, sure. I love good news. What's happening? I've just booked a five-day stay at a luxurious hotel in London for our family vacation. That's fantastic, Michael. Which hotel have you chosen? I've booked us into the Ritz. It's one of the most luxurious hotels in London. Wow, that's quite impressive. What amenities does the hotel offer? The Ritz offers a variety of amenities. They have spacious rooms, a fitness center, a wellness spa, and even a Michelin-starred restaurant. That sounds wonderful. When are we going? We're scheduled to leave next month. We'll have five full days to explore London. That sounds exciting. Do you have any plans for our trip? I've been thinking about it. London has so many attractions. We could visit the British Museum, the Tower of London, Buckingham Palace, and of course, the London Eye. I've always wanted to see the changing of the guard at Buckingham Palace. Can we include that in our itinerary? Absolutely, I think that's a great idea. We can also explore some of the city's beautiful parks like Hyde Park and Regent's Park. Don't forget about shopping. I'd love to visit Harrods and the markets at Covent Garden. Of course. Shopping is a must. We can also explore London's theater district. Maybe we could catch a show at the West End. I'd love that. I've heard that the food scene in London is amazing too. Yes, it's very diverse. We can try everything from traditional English food to international cuisine. This is sounding like a dream vacation, Michael. I'm really looking forward to it. Me too, Jennifer. I think it's going to be a trip to remember. Thank you for organizing this, Michael. I'm sure the kids will love it too. I hope so, Jennifer. I want it to be a special experience for all of us. I'm sure it will be, Michael. Thank you for making this happen.
You're welcome, Jennifer. I'm excited to share this experience with you and the kids. Me too, Michael. I can't wait. Let's start packing then. Absolutely, let the countdown begin. Preparing for a swimming lesson. Hi Mary, how are you today? Hello James, I'm good, thank you. How about you? I'm fine too, thanks. I heard you have a swimming lesson this weekend. Yes, that's right. I'm excited, but also a bit nervous. That's completely normal, Mary. Do you know what you need to bring for the lesson? Well, I guess I need a swimsuit and a towel, right? Yes, those are essential. Also, it's a good idea to bring goggles and a swim cap if you have them. They protect your eyes and hair from the chlorine in the pool. I see. I will make sure to bring them. How should I prepare myself for the lesson? Try to eat a light meal about one to two hours before the lesson. You don't want to swim on an empty stomach, but you also don't want to feel too full. That makes sense. What should I expect during the lesson? During your first lesson, the instructor will probably teach you some basic skills, like floating, kicking, and maybe some basic strokes. What if I feel scared or nervous in the water? It's okay to feel that way. Just remember, your instructor will be there to help you. And it's important to tell them if you're feeling scared or uncomfortable. I understand. Is there anything I should do after the lesson? Yes, after the lesson, it's a good idea to stretch your muscles and drink plenty of water. Also, you should rinse off in the shower to remove any chlorine from your skin and hair. Great advice, James. Thanks for your help. You're welcome, Mary. Swimming is a lot of fun once you get the hang of it. I'm sure you'll do great. I hope so. I'll remember all your tips. Thanks again. No problem at all, Mary. If you have any more questions, feel free to ask. Good luck with your swimming lesson. Thank you, James. Have a nice day. Being a contestant on a quiz show. Hi Patricia, I heard you're going to be on a quiz show. Is that true? Hello John, yes, that's correct. I'm both excited and nervous. That sounds like an amazing experience. Can you tell me a little bit about how you got selected? Of course. First, I had to fill out an online application. Then, I was invited to take a test to assess my general knowledge. After passing the test, I had an interview with the show's producers. They must have liked me, because I was selected to be a contestant. Wow, that sounds like quite a process. You must be very knowledgeable. How are you preparing for the show? I've been reading a lot and watching previous episodes of the show to get a feel for the type of questions they might ask. I've also been practicing with some quiz games at home. That's a good strategy. What kind of topics do you think you'll be asked about? Quiz shows usually cover a wide range of topics, such as history, science, culture, and current events. I'm trying to brush up on all these areas as much as I can. That's smart. I'm sure you'll do great. Is there anything you're particularly worried about? I'm a bit worried about the timed nature of the show. I tend to take my time to think about questions, but on the show, I'll need to respond quickly. That's a fair concern, but I'm sure you'll get the hang of it. Remember, it's just as much about the experience as it is about winning. You're absolutely right, John. I'm mainly doing this for the fun of it. It's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Definitely, and who knows? You might even win a big prize. That would be wonderful, but even if I don't, I'm sure I'll have a great time. That's the spirit, Patricia. Do you know when your episode will air? 
Not yet, but I'll let you know as soon as I do. I can't wait to watch you on TV. Best of luck, Patricia. Thank you, John. Your support means a lot to me. You're welcome, Patricia. Enjoy your time on the show. I certainly will, John. Thanks again for your kind words. My pleasure, Patricia. Take care. You too, John. Goodbye for now. Goodbye, Patricia. Can't wait to see you on the show. Hello, my friend. How are you today? Hi, Jack. I'm good, thank you. How about you? I'm fine, thanks. What did you do yesterday? Yesterday, I went to the park with my family. We had a picnic. And you? I watched a movie at home. It was fun. What was the movie about? It was about a man who travels in time to save the world. That sounds interesting. Did you like it? Yes, I liked it very much. It was exciting. I want to watch it too. Can you tell me the name of the movie? Of course. The name of the movie is Time Hero. Thank you, Jack. I will watch it soon. You're welcome, Emily. What are your plans for the weekend? This weekend, I will go shopping with my friends. We want to buy new clothes. What about you? I will visit my grandparents in the countryside. I haven't seen them for a long time. That's nice. I'm sure they will be happy to see you. Yes, I think so too. I miss them very much. I hope you have a great time with your grandparents. Thank you, Emily. I hope you have fun shopping with your friends. Thanks, Jack. I'm sure we will. By the way, have you tried the new restaurant near our school? No, I haven't. Is it good? Yes, it's very good. They serve delicious food. We should go there together someday. That's a great idea, Jack. Let's plan it for next week. Sure, I'll check my schedule and let you know. Perfect. I can't wait to try the new restaurant. Me too, Emily. I think you'll like it. I'm sure I will. Thank you for the suggestion. You're welcome. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. You too, Jack. See you later. Goodbye, Emily. Have a nice day. Goodbye, Jack. You too. Hi, Sarah. Have you ever been on a safari tour? Hello, John. No, I haven't. What is a safari tour? A safari tour is a trip where you can see wild animals in their natural habitat. It's really exciting. That sounds interesting. Where can we go for a safari tour? We can go to Africa. There are many countries with beautiful safari parks, like Kenya and Tanzania. Wow, I would love to go to Africa. What animals can we see there? We can see lions, elephants, giraffes, zebras, and many more animals. That's amazing. How long is a safari tour? It can be from a few days to a couple of weeks, depending on what you want to see and do. I think a week would be enough for me. What do we need to bring for the safari tour? We should bring comfortable clothes, a hat, sunscreen, insect repellent, and a good camera to take pictures of the animals. Great! Do we need to book the safari tour in advance? Yes, it's better to book it a few months before the trip, so we can find the best deals and make sure everything is arranged. I can't wait to go on a safari tour. What else can we do in Africa? 
we can visit local villages, learn about their culture, and try delicious African food. That sounds like a fantastic experience. I'm really looking forward to it. Me too, Sarah. I'm sure we'll have an unforgettable time on our safari tour in Africa. Let's start planning our trip. Thank you for telling me about safari tours, John. You're welcome, Sarah. I'm happy to share this adventure with you. Hi, Mary. I'm looking for a place to rent. Do you have any suggestions? Hi, John. Sure, I can help. What kind of place are you looking for? A house, an apartment, or a summer villa? I think an apartment would be best for me. What do you think? That's a good choice. Apartments are usually cheaper than houses and villas. How many rooms do you need? I need at least two rooms, one for myself and one for my office. What's your budget for the rent? I can spend up to $1,000 per month. That should be enough to find a nice apartment. What area do you want to live in? I'd like to live close to the city center, but not too close. I prefer a quiet neighborhood. I understand. Let me check online to see what's available in that area. Thank you, Mary. I appreciate your help. No problem, John. I found an apartment that might be perfect for you. It's a two-bedroom apartment, located in a quiet neighborhood, and the rent is $950 per month. That sounds interesting. Can you give me more information about it? Sure. The apartment is on the second floor of a building with an elevator. It has a balcony, a kitchen, and a bathroom with a bathtub. That's great. I like having a balcony. Is it furnished? Yes, it is. The apartment has a bed, a sofa, a dining table, and a desk. Wonderful. How can I contact the owner? I can give you the phone number. Would you like to call them now? Yes, please. I want to arrange a visit as soon as possible. Here is the phone number, 555-123-4567. Good luck, John. I hope you like the apartment. Thank you so much for your help, Mary. I will call the owner right away. You're welcome, John. Let me know how it goes. If you need any more help, just ask. I will, Mary. Have a great day. You too, John. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mary. Hey Bob, have you ever been on a cruise before? Hi Alice, no, I haven't. How about you? I've been on a cruise once, and it was a great experience. I was thinking about going on a Caribbean cruise with Royal Caribbean. Have you heard of them? Yes, I have. They are a popular cruise company. What can you tell me about their Caribbean cruises? They offer various itineraries and visit many beautiful islands in the Caribbean. The ships are incredible, with lots of activities, entertainment, and dining options. That sounds like fun. How long do these cruises usually last? The cruises can range from a few days to a couple of weeks, depending on the itinerary you choose. What kind of activities can I expect on the ship? There are swimming pools, water slides, rock climbing walls, theaters, and even ice skating rinks on some ships. They also have various clubs and bars for nighttime entertainment. Wow, that sounds amazing. Are there any special events or theme nights on the cruises? Yes, they often have themed parties, like pirate night or formal night. They also have live shows, comedy acts, and musical performances. What about the ports of call? What kind of activities can I do on the islands? There are many excursions you can book, like snorkeling, 
beach trips, historical tours, or even ziplining. You can also explore the islands on your own if you prefer. That sounds exciting. How do I book a cruise with Royal Caribbean? You can either book through their website or contact a travel agent. They often have special promotions and discounts, so it's a good idea to check their website regularly. Thanks for the information, Alice. I'll definitely consider taking a Caribbean cruise with Royal Caribbean. You're welcome, Bob. I'm sure you'll have an amazing time if you decide to go. If you have any more questions, feel free to ask. Thank you, Alice. I'll let you know if I need any more help. Have a great day. You too, Bob. Enjoy planning your trip. Hey Isabella, have you heard about the Maldives? It's a beautiful group of islands with luxury resorts. Hi Eric. Yes, I've heard about the Maldives. It's a popular vacation destination, right? Exactly. I was thinking, wouldn't it be great if we could plan a 15-day trip to a luxury resort in the Maldives with our school friends? That sounds amazing. I've always wanted to visit the Maldives. How do we start planning this trip? First, we need to decide which resort we want to stay at. There are so many to choose from. Maybe we can ask our friends for suggestions. I'm sure some of them have been to the Maldives before. Great idea. We can create a group chat and ask everyone for their input. After we decide on a resort, we'll need to book our flights and accommodations. It might be a good idea to start looking for deals now. Yes, I'll start searching for flights and resort packages. We should also decide on the dates for our trip. How about we make a list of activities we want to do while we're in the Maldives? That way, we can plan our days accordingly. That's a smart idea. There are so many activities to choose from, like snorkeling, scuba diving, and island hopping. Don't forget about relaxing on the beach and enjoying the beautiful sunsets. Of course. We'll also need to decide on a budget for our trip. Yes, we should take into account the cost of flights, accommodations, activities, and meals. Once we have a rough budget, we can share it with our friends and see if everyone is comfortable with it. I think it's important to be flexible with our plans, so everyone can have a good time. I agree. Let's get started on planning this amazing vacation. I can't wait. This will be a trip to remember. Thanks for suggesting it, Eric. You're welcome, Isabella. I'm sure it will be an unforgettable experience for all of us. Let's make it happen. Hi Isabella, have you ever thought about visiting the ancient centers of the Aztec and Maya civilizations? Hello Eric, yes, I've always been fascinated by their history and culture. Have you ever been there? I haven't, but I've been doing some research and I think it would be an amazing experience. Would you like to plan a trip together? That sounds like a great idea. Where should we start? Well, we could begin by visiting the ancient city of Teotihuacan in Mexico. It was an important center for both the Aztec and Maya civilizations. I've heard of Teotihuacan. It has the famous Pyramid of the Sun and the Pyramid of the Moon, right? Yes, that's correct. We could also visit the Templo Mayor in Mexico City, which was the main temple of the Aztec civilization. I'd love to see that. What about the Maya civilization? Where can we go to learn more about them? We could visit Chichen Itza in Mexico, which is one of the most famous Maya sites. It has the Cuculcan Pyramid, also known as El Castillo. That sounds fascinating. Are there any other important Maya sites we should consider visiting? Definitely. We could visit Palenque and Tulum in Mexico, Tikal in Guatemala, and Copan in Honduras. Each of these sites has its own unique history and architecture. 
Wow, there are so many places to explore. How should we plan our trip? I suggest we create an itinerary, starting with the sites we want to visit most. We can then research transportation options and accommodations near each site. That's a good plan. We should also learn more about the history and culture of the Aztec and Maya civilizations before our trip. I agree. We could read some books, watch documentaries, and maybe even take a course on their history and culture. I think that would really enrich our experience. Let's start planning and make sure we have enough time to fully appreciate each site. Absolutely. I'm really excited about this trip, Isabella. I think we're going to have an unforgettable experience. I agree, Eric. I can't wait to explore the ancient centers of the Aztec and Maya civilizations with you. Shopping for shoes at a shoe store. Hi Isabella, I heard you're looking for a new pair of shoes. Do you need any help? Hi Eric, yes, I am. I would appreciate some assistance. I'm not quite sure what type of shoes I should buy. Sure, I'm happy to help. First, let's think about what you need the shoes for. Are they for a specific event, or just everyday wear? I need some comfortable shoes for daily use. Something that can match with different outfits. Great. Let's start by looking at some sneakers and casual shoes. They're usually comfortable and versatile. What's your favorite color? I like black, white, and blue. I think those colors can easily match my wardrobe. Good choices. Here are some sneakers in those colors. You can also consider slip-ons or loafers for a more casual look. What do you think about these options? I like these black sneakers and the blue loafers. Can I try them on? Of course. Let me check if they have your size. What size do you wear? I wear a size 7. Okay, here you go. Try these on and see how they feel. Remember to walk around a bit to make sure they're comfortable. Thanks, Eric. These black sneakers feel great, but the blue loafers are a bit tight. Do they have a bigger size? Let me check for you. Yes, they have a size 7.5. Here, try these on. Thank you. The 7.5 fits much better. I think I'll go with the blue loafers. Great choice. They look stylish and comfortable. Is there anything else you need help with? Actually, I'm also looking for some shoe care products. What do you recommend to keep these loafers clean and in good condition? For leather shoes like these, I'd recommend using a soft cloth, leather cleaner, and leather conditioner. It's important to clean and condition your shoes regularly to keep them looking nice. Thank you for the advice, Eric. I'll pick up those shoe care products before I leave. I appreciate your help today. You're welcome, Isabella. I'm glad I could help. If you have any other questions or need assistance in the future, don't hesitate to ask. Enjoy your new shoes. Thanks, Eric. Have a great day. You too, Isabella. Take care. Buying jewelry at a store. Hi, Isabella. I heard you wanted to buy some jewelry. Can I help you with that? Hello, Eric. Yes, I'm looking for a jewelry store to buy a diamond ring and some gold earrings. Do you know a good place? Of course, Isabella. There's a great jewelry store called Elegant Gems nearby. They have a wide selection of diamonds, gold, and other precious stones. That sounds perfect. Do you know how to choose a good diamond? I'm not an expert, but I know the four CS are important. Carat, cut, color, and clarity. The carat is the weight of the diamond, and the cut refers to how well the diamond is shaped. I see. What about color and clarity? Color refers to the absence of any color in a diamond. 
The less color, the more valuable the diamond. Clarity is about the number of imperfections in the diamond. The fewer imperfections, the more valuable the stone. Thank you, Eric. That's very helpful. What about gold? How do I know if it's good quality? Gold is measured in carats, with 24 carats being pure gold. The higher the carat number, the more gold there is in the piece of jewelry. I understand. Is it better to buy higher carat gold? It depends on your preference. Higher carat gold is more valuable, but it's also softer and more susceptible to scratches. Lower carat gold is more durable but has a lower gold content. I appreciate the information. How can I make sure I'm getting a good deal at the jewelry store? It's a good idea to compare prices at different stores and ask for any available discounts. You can also ask for a certificate of authenticity for diamonds and other precious stones. Great advice, Eric. Thank you so much for your help. I feel more confident going to the jewelry store now. You're welcome, Isabella. If you have any more questions or need help, feel free to ask. Good luck with your jewelry shopping. Thank you, Eric. I'll let you know what I find. Have a great day. You too, Isabella. Enjoy your shopping. The Beauty of Serengeti Hi Isabella. Have you ever watched a nature documentary about the Serengeti in Africa? Hello Eric. Yes, I've seen a few documentaries. It's an amazing place with lots of beautiful landscapes and wildlife. I agree. I watched one recently, and I was fascinated by the vast open plains and the variety of animals that live there. Did you know that Serengeti is home to the largest land animal migration in the world? Yes, I've heard about the Great Migration. It's when millions of wildebeest, zebras, and other animals travel in search of food and water, right? That's correct. They travel around 1,800 miles each year, facing many challenges like crossing crocodile-infested rivers and avoiding predators like lions and hyenas. Wow, that's incredible. I also read that the Serengeti ecosystem supports the highest concentration of large predators in the world. Yes, it's true. The predators are essential for maintaining the balance in the ecosystem. For instance, lions help control the population of herbivores by hunting them for food. I remember seeing a documentary about the endangered African elephants in the Serengeti. They're such intelligent and social animals. Absolutely. Elephants are known for their strong family bonds and their ability to communicate with each other. They also play a vital role in shaping the landscape by uprooting trees and creating clearings, which promotes the growth of grasslands. It's sad to think about how human activities, like poaching and habitat loss, are threatening these amazing creatures. Yes, it's crucial to raise awareness and support conservation efforts to protect the Serengeti and its inhabitants. Many organizations are working hard to preserve this unique ecosystem. That's true. And ecotourism can also contribute to conservation by providing funds for wildlife protection and supporting local communities. Absolutely. Visiting the Serengeti on a responsible safari can be a life-changing experience, offering a chance to witness the beauty of nature while supporting its preservation. I'd love to visit the Serengeti one day and see its breathtaking landscapes and incredible wildlife with my own eyes. Me too, Isabella. It's definitely on my bucket list. Until then, we can continue learning about it and sharing our knowledge with others to help promote conservation. That's a great idea, Eric. Let's keep exploring the wonders of our planet and do our part to protect it. I couldn't agree more, Isabella. Let's keep our passion for nature alive and inspire others to join us in our journey. The big news, Charles and Elizabeth are getting engaged. 
Hello Elizabeth, you look beautiful today. How are you feeling? Hi Charles, thank you for the compliment. I'm feeling great. How about you? I'm feeling fantastic, especially since I have something important to tell you. Oh, really? What is it? Well, Elizabeth, we've been together for a long time now, and I think it's time for us to take our relationship to the next level. Charles, are you saying what I think you're saying? Yes, Elizabeth. I'm asking if you'd like to become engaged to me. Will you be my fiancé? Oh Charles, I'm so happy. Yes, I will be your fiancé. I'm thrilled to hear that, Elizabeth. I can't wait to spend the rest of my life with you. Same here, Charles. What do we need to do next? Well, traditionally, the next step would be to choose an engagement ring. Would you like to come with me to pick one out, or would you like it to be a surprise? I would love to pick out the ring together, Charles. Great. We can visit the jewelry store next week. Besides that, we should also start thinking about our engagement party. That sounds like fun. Should we have a theme for the party? That's a good idea. We could think about our shared interests and decide on a theme that represents us. I agree, Charles. We also need to make a guest list. Yes, we should include our close friends and family. They'll be excited to hear our good news. Absolutely. And we'll need to decide on the food, drinks, and decorations. That's right. We can start planning those details once we've set a date for the party. I'm looking forward to planning this party with you, Charles. I am too, Elizabeth. And most importantly, I'm looking forward to spending the rest of my life with you. I feel the same way, Charles. This is the beginning of a new and exciting chapter in our lives. The Grand Shopping Adventure of Charles and Elizabeth Hi Elizabeth, how are you today? Hello Charles, I'm doing well, thank you. How about you? I'm doing great, thanks. I heard you went shopping this weekend. What happened? Oh, it was quite the adventure. I went to the new mall downtown. Really? Who did what there? Well, I went with my friend Sarah. She bought a beautiful dress from a boutique. And I bought some new books. That sounds fun. What kind of books did you buy? I bought a few mystery novels, a cookbook, and a book about gardening. Interesting choices. Did you manage to get any good deals? Yes, we did. Sarah got her dress on sale, and I found a bargain on the cookbook. That's great. Were there a lot of people at the mall? Yes, it was pretty crowded. But everyone was wearing masks and keeping their distance, so it felt safe. That's good to hear. Did anything interesting happen while you were shopping? Yes, while we were there, a local band started playing music in the center of the mall. It was a nice surprise. That does sound like a nice surprise. Did you enjoy the music? We really did. They played a mix of pop and rock songs, and they were quite good. It sounds like you had a wonderful time. I should check out that mall soon. You definitely should, Charles. Maybe we could go together next time? That sounds like a great plan, Elizabeth. I'm looking forward to our shopping adventure. Me too, Charles. Let's make sure to plan it soon. Getting to know Dexter and Elizabeth, a journey of discovery. Hi Elizabeth, how are you today? Hello Dexter, I'm doing well, thank you. How about you? I'm doing great, thanks. Since we've recently met, I thought we could know more about each other. 
That sounds like a good idea. Where are you from, Dexter? I'm originally from London, England. I moved to the United States for work a few years ago. And you, Elizabeth? I was born and raised in New York. It's a bustling city. Do you miss London? Yes, I do, especially the historical buildings and the amazing food. But I'm also enjoying life here in the US. How about your family, Elizabeth? My parents live in Florida now, and my brother works in California. I visit them quite often. Do you have any siblings, Dexter? Yes, I have two sisters. They both live in London and I miss them a lot. I can imagine, family is so important. What's your favorite thing about living in the US? I love the diversity here. People from all walks of life coexist, which makes this place quite fascinating. What about you? What's your favorite thing about New York? The endless opportunities and the energy of the city. There's always something to do or see. What do you do in your free time, Dexter? I enjoy reading and hiking. The nearby mountains provide a great escape from the city life. How about you? I love painting and playing piano. It's a good way to relax and unwind. That sounds great. Music and art are indeed good stress busters. Have you always lived in New York? Yes, I was born and raised here, but I love traveling and have visited many different countries. How about you, have you traveled to many places? Yes, I've been fortunate to visit several countries due to my work. I'm particularly fond of Italy for its rich culture and history. Italy is indeed a beautiful country. I visited Rome last year and it was an unforgettable experience. It certainly sounds like it. Speaking of experiences, I would love to hear more about your painting. I'd love to share more about it. Painting is a passion of mine and it's very therapeutic. How about your hobbies, Dexter? I find hiking to be very calming and rejuvenating. I guess we both have our unique ways of finding peace and tranquility. Yes, indeed. I'm glad we had this conversation, Dexter. It's nice to know more about you. Likewise, Elizabeth. I enjoyed our chat. Here's to many more. Absolutely, Dexter. Here's to many more. The fire in the abandoned building downtown, what happened? Hi Rebecca, did you hear about the fire downtown last night? Hello Albert, yes, I did. It was quite scary. It was in that old, abandoned building, wasn't it? Yes, it was. I saw it on the news. The firefighters were there all night trying to put out the flames. I can't believe it. That building has been empty for years. How do you think the fire started? The authorities are still investigating. They're not sure if it was an accident or if it was set on purpose. That's terrifying. I hope no one was hurt. Fortunately, the building was vacant and no one was injured. But it caused a lot of damage. That's a relief. I'm glad to hear no one was hurt. But what about the damage to the building? The building was already in poor condition. The fire caused even more damage and it may need to be demolished now. I suppose that's not a surprise. It's been neglected for so long. Do you think this could have been prevented? It's hard to say. If the building had been maintained or secured better, it might have made a difference. I agree. It's a shame that it ended up like this. What do you think will happen now? The city will likely inspect the damage and decide whether the building should be repaired or demolished. They'll also continue to investigate the cause of the fire. I hope they find out what caused it. It's important to prevent something like this from happening again. I completely agree, Rebecca. 
It's a serious issue that needs to be addressed. Absolutely. Well, it's good that we're aware of what happened. It's important to stay informed about our community. That's true. I'm glad we could discuss it. It's good to keep up with local news and understand what's happening in our city. Thank you, Albert. I always enjoy our conversations. They're not only interesting but also very informative. I'm glad to hear that, Rebecca. I feel the same way. I'll keep you updated if I hear any more news about the fire. I'd appreciate that, Albert. Have a great day. You too, Rebecca. Take care. Unlock the secrets of finding the best travel deals. Hello, Rebecca. I heard you're planning to travel. Where are you planning to go? Hi, Albert. I'm planning to visit Spain. I'm really looking forward to it, but I need to find a reasonable ticket. That sounds exciting. Well, there are several ways to find good deals on flight tickets. Have you decided when you're going? I'm pretty flexible, but I'd prefer to travel during the off-peak season to save some money. That's a smart choice. Prices usually drop during the off-peak season. Have you considered booking your flight in advance? Yes, I have. But how far in advance should I book? Typically, booking a flight two to three months in advance can get you a good deal. However, keep an eye on flight prices as they can fluctuate. That's a good tip, Albert. I'll start checking the prices regularly. Another thing you can do is use flight comparison websites. They compare prices from different airlines and show you the cheapest options. I've heard about those, but I'm not sure which ones to use. Some popular ones are Skyscanner, Kayak, and Expedia. They're quite user-friendly. I'll give them a try. Is there anything else I should know? Yes, consider being flexible with your departure and arrival airports. Sometimes, nearby airports may offer cheaper flights. I'll keep that in mind. Thank you for all the tips, Albert. You're welcome, Rebecca. Another thing to consider is signing up for airline newsletters. They often send exclusive deals and discounts to their subscribers. That's a great idea. I'll definitely sign up for a few. Also, consider using a credit card that offers travel rewards. You can earn points for every purchase you make and then redeem those points for flights. I'll look into that. Thanks, Albert. You've been so helpful. I feel more confident about finding a good deal now. I'm glad to hear that, Rebecca. Remember, finding the best deal takes a bit of time and research, but it's worth it in the end. Enjoy your trip to Spain. Thanks, Albert. I'll keep all your advice in mind. I appreciate your help. It's my pleasure, Rebecca. If you have any other questions, feel free to ask. Safe travels. Thank you, Albert. I'm looking forward to my trip. Have a great day. The unexpected surprise, what happened to Rebecca's car? Hi Rebecca, I have something important to tell you. Hello Richard, sure, what is it? Do you remember you let me borrow your car yesterday? Yes, I remember. Is there something wrong with my car? No, no, your car is perfectly fine. It's just that something interesting happened while I was using it. Interesting? What do you mean? Well, while I was driving your car, I got a flat tire. Oh no, really? What did you do then? I called roadside assistance, and they came to help me change the tire. That's good to hear, Richard. But why is this an interesting story? Because while I was waiting for the roadside assistance, I met a man who was walking his dog. We started chatting, and it turns out he's a famous movie director. 
A movie director? Really? Which one? His name is David, and he directed some of the biggest blockbuster movies in Hollywood. That's amazing. But what's the connection with my car? Well, he noticed your car and complimented it. He said it's just the kind of car he was looking for to use in his next movie. My car in a movie? That's incredible. Yes, it is. And he gave me his contact details. He said he'd like to meet you and talk about it if you're interested. Wow, that's an unexpected surprise. I'd love to meet him. Great. I'll arrange a meeting then. It was quite an adventure, thanks to borrowing your car. Thank you, Richard. I'm excited to see where this leads. Me too, Rebecca. I'm glad I could share this exciting news with you. Thanks again, Richard. I'll look forward to hearing more about it. Do-It-Yourself, House Painting Adventures with Richard and Linda. Hi Linda, how are you today? Hello Richard, I'm doing well, thank you. How about you? I'm fantastic, thanks. I've been busy painting my house. Have you ever tried painting a house yourself? Oh, that's interesting. No, I haven't, but it seems like a big project. Did you paint the house yourself, Richard? Yes, I did. It was a bit challenging but also very satisfying. I learned a lot from the experience. That's impressive. How did you decide on the color? I wanted to give my house a fresh look. So, I chose a light blue color. It really brightens up the house. That sounds lovely. What materials did you need for the project? I needed a lot of things, like paint, brushes, a ladder, and protective sheets to cover the floor and furniture. It's important to prepare everything before starting. I see. Did you encounter any difficulties while painting? Well, painting the high parts of the house was a bit tricky. I had to use a ladder and be very careful not to fall. Safety first, of course. How long did it take you to finish painting? It took me a couple of weekends. I wanted to take my time to make sure everything was done properly. It sounds like a rewarding experience. Do you have any advice for someone who wants to paint their house? Certainly, it's best to take your time, especially if it's your first time painting a house. And don't be afraid to ask for help or advice. There are many resources online that can guide you. Thank you for the advice, Richard. Your experience makes me want to try painting my house too. That's great to hear, Linda. I'm sure you do a fantastic job. If you ever decide to paint your house, feel free to ask me for help. Thank you, Richard. I will keep that in mind. Congratulations on successfully painting your house. Thanks, Linda. I appreciate your kind words. Let's talk again soon. Exploring the exotic marvels of Morocco Hi Linda, I've been thinking about my next holiday destination. Hi Richard, that sounds exciting. Where are you planning to go? I'd like to go to Morocco for my holidays. I've heard a lot about its rich culture and history. Oh, that's a fantastic choice. Morocco has a lot to offer. Have you thought about what cities you want to visit? I've heard that Marrakesh and Casablanca are must-visit cities. Do you have any recommendations? Indeed, Marrakesh and Casablanca are beautiful. You should also consider visiting Fez and Chefchaouen. Fez is known for its historic Medina and Chefchaouen is famous for its blue-painted streets. That sounds great. I'll add them to my list. What about the food? I've heard Moroccan cuisine is incredible. You're absolutely right. 
make sure to try traditional dishes like couscous, tagine, and pastilla. Also, their mint tea is very famous. I'm looking forward to trying all those dishes. What's the best time to visit Morocco? Morocco can be visited all year round, but the most pleasant time is during spring and fall when the temperatures are moderate. That's very useful, Linda. What about the local culture? Is there anything I need to know? Moroccans are generally very hospitable and friendly. Just remember to respect the local customs and traditions. Also, bargaining is very common in the markets, so don't be shy to negotiate prices. I appreciate your advice, Linda. I'm getting more excited about this trip. I'm sure you'll have an amazing time, Richard. Feel free to ask if you have more questions. Thanks a lot, Linda. I'll start planning my trip right away. You're welcome, Richard. I can't wait to hear all about your Moroccan adventure. Discovering cities and professions, an inspiring conversation between Richard and Linda. Hello Linda, how are you today? Hi Richard, I'm well, thank you. And you? I'm great, thanks. I was wondering if we could chat about cities and professions. I'm interested in learning more about different jobs and where they are prevalent. That's a very interesting topic, Richard. I'd be happy to share what I know. Where do you want to start? Let's start with our own city. What professions are common here? Well, we live in a big city, so there's quite a range. We have many people working in business, technology, healthcare, and education, to name a few. Right, those are definitely prevalent. What about in smaller cities or towns? In smaller towns, you might find more people working in agriculture or local businesses. Teachers, doctors, and public service workers like police and firefighters are essential everywhere, of course. That makes sense. What about professions related to the arts? Those can be found in many places, but larger cities often have a more vibrant art scene. They might have more opportunities for actors, musicians, artists, and so on. I see. And what about professions that are unique to certain cities? Great question. Some cities are known for certain industries. For example, Los Angeles is known for entertainment, while Silicon Valley is known for technology. Fascinating. It's interesting to see how cities and professions can be so interconnected. Indeed, the city's culture, resources, and history can influence the types of jobs that are common there. I appreciate your insights, Linda. This conversation has given me a lot to think about. I'm glad you found it interesting, Richard. It was a pleasure to discuss this topic with you. Thank you, Linda. I look forward to our next conversation. Me too, Richard. Take care. Barcode scanners, revolutionizing the world one code at a time. Hi Rebecca, how are you today? Hi Richard, I'm doing well. How about you? I'm fine too, thanks. I was reading about barcode scanners, and I thought it would be interesting to discuss. Sounds interesting. Could you explain to me what a barcode scanner is? Sure, a barcode scanner is a device that can read the information encoded in a barcode. This information is usually a unique identifier for a product or item. Oh, I see. So it's the device we see in supermarkets that scans our products? Exactly. Those are just one type of barcode scanner. There are many different types, but they all work in a similar way. That's cool. But what makes them so important? What benefits do they provide? Well, barcode scanners provide a lot of benefits. They can help to increase efficiency and accuracy in many fields. For instance, in retail, they help with inventory management, pricing, and checkout speed. 
Can you explain how they increase efficiency and accuracy? Of course. Since the information is stored electronically, the scanner can read it quickly and accurately. This reduces the chance of human error that can occur with manual data entry. I see. That sounds like a great advantage. How do they help with inventory management? With barcode scanners, inventory tracking becomes much easier. Each time a product is sold, its barcode is scanned, and the inventory system is updated automatically. This helps businesses know exactly how much of a product they have in stock at any time. That sounds very useful. Are there any other areas where barcode scanners are used? Yes, they are also used in logistics, healthcare, and even in libraries. For example, in healthcare, they can help track patient information and medication, ensuring that the right patient gets the right medication at the right time. It's fascinating how barcode scanners can provide such convenience and accuracy. They really are revolutionizing many sectors. I couldn't agree more, Rebecca. Barcode scanners are indeed a simple technology that has profound impacts. Thank you, Richard, for such an enlightening conversation. I've certainly learned a lot about barcode scanners. You're welcome, Rebecca. I'm glad I could share this knowledge with you. Have a great day. You too, Richard. Take care. Uncovering the legend of Maradona, soccer, the World Cup, and the hand of God. Hi Rebecca, have you ever heard about Maradona? Hello Albert, yes, of course. Maradona is a legendary soccer player, isn't he? That's correct. Diego Maradona is considered one of the greatest soccer players of all time. He was born in Argentina. I've heard about him playing in the World Cup. Can you tell me more? Yes, Maradona had some of his finest moments in the World Cup. He played in four World Cups for Argentina, and in 1986, he led the team to victory. That's impressive. I've heard about a controversial goal he scored in that tournament. What's the story behind that? Oh, you're referring to the hand of God goal. It happened during the quarterfinal match against England in 1986. Maradona punched the ball into the net with his hand, and the referee allowed the goal. Why is it called the hand of God? It's because Maradona later claimed that the goal was scored a little with the head of Maradona and a little with the hand of God. This comment made headlines around the world, and hence, the goal has since been known as the Hand of God. That's a fascinating story. Did this incident affect his career? It did stir controversy, but it didn't overshadow his skills and contributions to the game. In fact, in the same match, he scored what is often referred to as the goal of the century, an incredible solo goal where he dribbled past five England players to score. It sounds like he had quite the impact on the world of soccer. Absolutely. Maradona's style of play, his dribbling ability, and his tactical mind have influenced many players. His story is not only about his extraordinary talent, but also about his struggle with fame and personal issues, making him an incredibly complex and interesting figure in sports history. I feel like I've learned so much about Maradona today. Thank you for sharing, Albert. It was my pleasure, Rebecca. It's always exciting to discuss soccer and its legends. Do you have any other questions on this topic? Not for now, Albert. But I'm sure I'll have more the next time we chat. I look forward to it. I do as well, Rebecca. Until then, take care. You too, Albert. See you soon. The thrills of football and the excitement of the World Cup. Hi Rebecca, have you been following the World Cup? Hello Albert, yes, I have. It's such an exciting time. Do you like football? Absolutely. 
football brings people together from all over the world. I love the energy of the World Cup. How about you? I feel the same. The World Cup is the pinnacle of football. It's incredible to see so many countries represented. I agree. The level of talent on display is outstanding. What's been your favorite match so far? I really enjoyed the match between Brazil and Germany. The level of skill and teamwork was impressive. What about you? That was a great match indeed. I enjoyed watching Argentina versus Spain. The strategies and tactics used were fascinating. Yes, the tactical side of football can be just as thrilling as the goals. Who are you rooting for in the tournament? I'm supporting England this year. I've always admired their style of play. And you? I'm rooting for France. I've followed them since I was a kid. It's been exciting to watch their journey in this World Cup. Both are strong teams. It will be interesting to see how they perform in the coming matches. Do you have a favorite player? I really admire Kylian Mbappe. His speed and skill are astonishing. Who's your favorite player? I have always been a fan of Lionel Messi. His ability to control the ball and create opportunities is exceptional. Yes, they're both great players. I think what makes the World Cup so special is seeing all these talented players compete on the same stage. That's very true. It's a chance for players and countries to show their skills and share their love for football. It's truly a global celebration. I couldn't agree more. Football and the World Cup bring so much joy and unity. I'm looking forward to the rest of the matches. Me too, Rebecca. Let's catch the next game together. That sounds great, Albert. I'm looking forward to it. A Delicious Dilemma, The Secret Behind Barbara's Cooking Hello Robert, I wanted to share something funny with you. My husband thinks I'm a wonderful cook. Hi Barbara. That's great to hear. And why do you find that funny? Well, because I don't actually do much cooking. I usually buy pre-made meals and just heat them up. That's interesting, Barbara. But perhaps he enjoys the way you present the food or the atmosphere you create during meal times. Maybe, Robert. I try to set a nice table and we often enjoy our meals together with some music in the background. See, Barbara. That's part of the magic of a good meal. It's not just about the food, but also about the environment and company. That's a nice perspective, Robert. But I still feel a bit guilty. Do you think I should tell him? If you're comfortable doing so, maybe you could tell him. Honesty is always the best policy in a relationship. Or perhaps you could start learning to cook and surprise him. That's a good idea, Robert. I've always wanted to learn to cook, but never found the time. I might take some cooking classes. That sounds like a plan, Barbara. And remember, cooking is a skill. With practice, you can definitely get better at it. Yes, you're right. It will also be a fun activity to do. Maybe my husband can join me in the cooking classes. That's an excellent idea, Barbara. It can be a great way to spend time together and create a new shared hobby. You've given me so much to think about, Robert. Thank you for your advice. You're welcome, Barbara. Enjoy your cooking journey. And don't forget to share some of your delicious creations with me. Of course, Robert. I will definitely share the fruits of our labor with you. I'm looking forward to it, Barbara. Have a great day. The Unexpected Adventure After Missing the First Bus Hi Barbara, you won't believe what happened to me this morning. Hello Robert. I'm curious now. What happened? 
I missed the first bus to work. I woke up late and rushed to the bus stop, but I was too late. Oh no, Robert. That must have been stressful. How did you manage to get to work? It was indeed, but something interesting happened. I decided to wait for the next bus and while waiting, I decided to have a cup of coffee from the cafe near the bus stop. That sounds nice. So, was your day better after the coffee? It was, Barbara. At the cafe, I met an old friend from college who I hadn't seen in years. We had a long chat and even decided to catch up more often. Well, Robert. Missing the bus turned out to be a good thing after all. Yes, it did. I was reminded of how small surprises can make your day. That's true, Robert. It's important to remain positive even in unexpected situations. How was the rest of your day? It was quite good, Barbara. I managed to catch the next bus and reach work on time. I had a productive day at work, and the meeting with my old friend made it even better. That's great, Robert. I'm happy to hear that you had a good day, despite the initial hiccup. Thanks, Barbara. It was indeed an unexpected adventure. How was your day? My day was quite usual, Robert. But hearing about your day made it more interesting. I'm glad to hear that, Barbara. It just goes to show that every cloud has a silver lining. Absolutely, Robert. Thanks for sharing your story with me. You're welcome, Barbara. I'm looking forward to more unexpected adventures. Me too, Robert. Let's hope for the best. Behind the scenes of a best-selling novel, a candid conversation with David the author. Hi David, how are you today? Hello Barbara, I'm doing well, thank you. How about you? I'm fine, thanks. I've heard that you're writing a novel. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. I've been working on it for the past few months. That's exciting. Can you share what it's about? Well, it's a mystery novel set in a small town. The main character is a detective trying to solve a series of unusual events happening in the town. That sounds interesting. What inspired you to write this novel? I've always been a fan of mystery novels, and I wanted to create my own unique story. The idea of a small town with secrets appealed to me. I can't wait to read it. What's your process for writing a novel? I start by outlining the main plot and characters. Then, I work on each chapter, focusing on keeping the story engaging and suspenseful. It seems like a lot of work. How do you stay motivated? I try to write a little bit every day, and I always keep in mind the end goal, which is to create a captivating story for readers. That's a great approach. Do you have any tips for people who want to write their own novels? Definitely. Start with an idea you're passionate about, create an outline, and write a little every day. Don't worry about it being perfect at first, you can always edit later. Those are helpful tips, David. When do you expect to finish your novel? I'm aiming to finish the first draft in the next couple of months. After that, I'll spend some time editing and refining the story. That's wonderful, David. I wish you the best of luck with your novel. I'm sure it will be a success. Thank you, Barbara. I appreciate your support and kind words. Behind the scenes of the stock market. Hi Barbara, how have you been? Hello David, I've been well, thank you. How about you? I'm good, thanks. I heard that you started working for a stockbroker. How's that going? It's been a fascinating experience, David. I've been learning a lot about how the stock market works. That sounds interesting. Can you explain a little bit about what a stockbroker does? 
Sure, a stockbroker is a professional who buys and sells stocks and other securities for both retail and institutional clients through a stock exchange or over the counter in return for a fee or commission. I see. That seems like a very important job. What's your role in the company? I work as an assistant to the stockbroker. I help in researching the stock market, preparing reports, and handling client communications. That must be a lot of work. But it also sounds like a great opportunity to learn. Yes, it's quite challenging, but also very rewarding. I get to be involved in exciting financial transactions and help our clients make informed investment decisions. Do you have any advice for someone interested in investing in the stock market? Well, I'm not a financial advisor, but I would say it's important to do your research, understand your financial goals, and be prepared for the risks involved. Also, it can be helpful to work with a professional, like a stockbroker. Thank you for the advice, Barbara. Your job sounds very exciting. I might consider investing in the stock market myself. I'm glad to hear that, David. Remember, it's always a good idea to get professional advice before making any investment decisions. Absolutely, Barbara. Thanks for the insightful conversation. I hope we can chat more about this in the future. Of course, David. I'm always here if you have any more questions. Have a great day. My little house and my big family. Hi, how was your day? Hi, my day was good. How about you? I'm good too. I was thinking about my small house and big family. Oh, that sounds interesting. How many people are in your family? There are 10 people in my family, including me. Wow, that's a big family. Who are the members of your family? I have my parents, three brothers, two sisters, and my grandparents. That's nice. Do you all live in the same small house? Yes, we do. It's a bit crowded, but we love being together. I can imagine. What do you like most about having a big family? I like that there is always someone to talk to and play with. That's true. Do you have any family traditions? Yes, we have a big family dinner every Sunday night. That sounds lovely. What kind of food do you usually have at the dinner? We have different dishes every time, but my mom's pasta is always a favorite. I love pasta too. Do you help with the cooking? Yes, sometimes I help my mom in the kitchen. I like to learn new recipes. That's great. Do your siblings help as well? Yes, we all take turns helping with the cooking and cleaning. It's nice that everyone contributes. Do you have any pets? Yes, we have a dog named Max. He's like another family member. I love dogs. How do you manage to take care of him with so many people in the house? We all take turns walking him and feeding him. It's not too hard. That's good to hear. I think having a big family is wonderful. I agree. I'm very lucky to have them. How about your family? My family is smaller, but I still love them very much. That's great. Family is important, no matter the size. I agree. Well, it was nice talking to you about your family. Thank you. I enjoyed our conversation too. Have a great day. You too. Goodbye. Goodbye, see you later. Human Anatomy Hi Bob, I want to learn about human anatomy. Can you help me with that? Hello Alice, sure. I'd be happy to help. Human anatomy is the study of the body and its parts. 
That sounds interesting. What are the main parts of the human body? The human body has many parts. Some of the main ones are the head, arms, legs, and the torso, which is the middle part of the body. I see. Can you tell me about the head? Of course. The head has the brain, which is the control center of the body. It also has the eyes, ears, nose, and mouth. What about the arms and legs? The arms and legs are also called limbs. The arms have hands at the end, and the legs have feet. We use our arms and hands to hold things and our legs and feet to walk. That's clear. And what's inside the torso? The torso contains many important organs, such as the heart, lungs, and stomach. The heart pumps blood, the lungs help us breathe, and the stomach helps us digest food. I've heard about bones. What can you tell me about them? Bones are the hard parts that make up the skeleton, which gives the body its shape and support. There are 206 bones in an adult human body. Wow, that's a lot of bones. How do the parts of the body work together? The different parts of the body work together like a team. For example, the muscles help us move, the heart and lungs provide oxygen and nutrients, and the brain sends signals to control everything. That's amazing. How can I learn more about human anatomy? You can read books, watch videos, or take a class to learn more about human anatomy. It's a fascinating subject. Thank you, Bob. I'll look for more information. I appreciate your help. You're welcome, Alice. If you have any more questions, just let me know. Enjoy learning about human anatomy. Thanks, Bob. Have a great day. You too, Alice. Take care. Gas station. Hello. How are you today? Hi. I'm good, thank you. How about you? I'm fine, thanks. I need to go to the gas station to get some fuel for my car. Do you know where the nearest one is? Yes, there's a gas station just two blocks away from here. Turn right at the next intersection and you'll see it. Great, thank you. I'm new to this area, so I'm still learning where everything is. No problem, happy to help. Do you need directions to any other places around here? Actually, I'm also looking for a grocery store to buy some food. Do you know where I can find one? Sure. There's a big supermarket just five minutes away by car. After you leave the gas station, continue straight for two blocks, then turn left. You'll see the supermarket on your right. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your help. You're welcome. If you need any more help, feel free to ask. I've lived in this neighborhood for a long time, so I know my way around. That's very kind of you. I will definitely ask if I need any more assistance. Are there any good restaurants around here that you recommend? Oh, there are many. If you like pizza, there's a fantastic pizza place just across the street from the supermarket. They have the best pizza in town. I love pizza. I'll have to try it out. What about a good place for coffee or breakfast? There's a cozy little cafe a few blocks away from the pizza place. They have great coffee and delicious pastries. It's the perfect spot for breakfast or an afternoon snack. That sounds lovely. I'll be sure to check it out. Thanks for all the recommendations. My pleasure. Enjoy exploring the neighborhood. I will. Have a great day. You too. Good luck with your errands. Unveiling the Urban Canvas, Graffiti in the Metro and the City Hey Emma, how's your day going? Hi Jack, I'm doing well, thanks. 
And you? I'm doing fine. Did you notice the new graffiti in the metro? Yes, I did. It's quite eye-catching. What are your thoughts on graffiti, Jack? Well, Emma, I think graffiti is an intriguing form of art. It gives artists a chance to express themselves in public spaces. I agree, Jack. It can certainly add color and character to otherwise dull spaces, like a metro station. However, isn't it considered illegal in many places? That's a good point, Emma. Yes, unauthorized graffiti is often viewed as vandalism and is illegal. It can lead to fines or even imprisonment. It's a bit of a paradox, isn't it? On one hand, it's a creative expression, on the other hand, it's seen as a crime. Absolutely, it's a fine line between art and vandalism. What do you think about graffiti being used to address social issues? I think it can be a powerful tool for raising awareness and sparking conversations about important topics. I've seen some graffiti pieces in the city that depict global warming, for instance. Yes, it's amazing how a piece of art can convey such powerful messages. Graffiti can definitely be a voice for the voiceless. True. But there should be some rules, I guess. Artistic expression shouldn't harm public or private property. I completely agree, Emma. Maybe cities can designate specific areas for artists to create their graffiti. That way, it can be appreciated without causing any harm. That sounds like a balanced solution, Jack. It's a pleasure discussing this with you. Likewise, Emma. Conversations like this make me appreciate the complex beauty of our urban landscapes. Indeed, Jack. I look forward to more enlightening conversations with you. Have a great day. Day of the Dead Festival in Mexico. Hi Mary. I recently heard about a unique festival in Mexico called the Day of the Dead. Do you know anything about it? Hi James. Yes, I do. The Day of the Dead, or Dia de los Muertos in Spanish, is a traditional Mexican holiday that celebrates and remembers loved ones who have passed away. That sounds interesting. How do they celebrate it? It's a colorful and festive event. Families create altars, or ofrendas, in their homes to honor their deceased loved ones. These altars are decorated with flowers, candles, photos of the deceased, and their favorite foods and drinks. It sounds like a beautiful tribute. Is there any significance to the items placed on the altar? Yes, there is. Each item has a specific meaning. For example, marigold flowers or sempasakil are believed to guide the spirits to the altar. Candles are lit to welcome them, and the food is an offering for the spirits. That's quite meaningful. Are there any other customs associated with the Day of the Dead? Absolutely. One popular tradition is the creation of sugar skulls or calicas. These are colorful, decorated skulls made of sugar, which symbolize death and rebirth. I've seen pictures of those. They're very vibrant and artistic. Are there any special foods or drinks during this festival? Yes, there are. Pan de Muerto, or Bread of the Dead, is a sweet bread that's commonly made for this occasion. Also, a drink called Atoll, which is a traditional hot corn and masa drink, is often consumed. It's fascinating how the Day of the Dead seems to mix celebration with remembrance. Is this festival only celebrated in Mexico? The Day of the Dead is primarily a Mexican holiday, but it's also recognized in other cultures around the world, especially those with a large Mexican community. The United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, or UNESCO, has even recognized it as an intangible cultural heritage of humanity. That's amazing. I'd love to experience the Day of the Dead Festival someday. It seems like a beautiful way to remember and honor our loved ones. I agree, James. It's a unique celebration that embraces death as a natural part of life, 
which is quite different from many other cultures. Thank you for sharing, Mary. I've learned so much about the Day of the Dead today. You're welcome, James. I'm glad I could share this with you. If you have any other questions about it, feel free to ask. Will do, Mary. Thank you again, and have a great day. You too, James. Take care. The Running of the Bulls Festival in Spain Hello Mary, I've heard you went to Spain last summer. Did you by any chance attend the Running of the Bulls Festival? Hi James, yes, I did. It's a unique and exciting event that happens in the city of Pamplona every year. That's interesting. Can you tell me more about the festival? What exactly happens there? Sure, I'd love to. The festival is called San Fermin, and the running of the bulls is just one part of it. It's an event where people run in front of a group of bulls that have been let loose on a course of a sectioned off subset of the town streets. That sounds dangerous. Why do people do it? It's a tradition that dates back to the 14th century. Initially, it was a practical thing, the bulls had to be moved from the city outskirts to the bullring where they would be fought in the afternoon. Youngsters would jump among them to show off their bravado. Oh, I see. So, it turned into a festival over time. What else happens during the festival? Apart from the bull runs, there are many other activities like parades, fireworks, and traditional sports. It's a week-long festival, and the whole city is decorated with red and white, which are the colors of the event. That sounds like quite a spectacle. But, aren't there any safety concerns during the running of the bulls? Absolutely, it can be very dangerous, and there have been injuries and even deaths in the past. Before the event starts, there are safety instructions given, and you must be over 18 to participate. It's also advised not to participate if you have been drinking. That makes sense. It's important to be careful. Did you participate in the running? No, I didn't. I watched from a safe distance. It was thrilling enough just to be a spectator. I can imagine. It must have been an unforgettable experience. Is there anything else you'd like to share about the festival? Just that it's a huge part of the local culture. The people of Pamplona take great pride in hosting the San Fermin Festival. While the running of the bulls might be the most famous event, the entire festival is a celebration of the city's heritage. It sounds incredible, Mary. I'd love to see it for myself someday. Thanks for sharing your experience. You're welcome, James. If you ever decide to go, I'm sure you'll have a great time. Just remember to stay safe. Holiday Hi, do you have any plans for the holiday? Yes, I'm going on a trip with my family. What about you? I'm going to visit my grandparents in the countryside. Where are you going? We're going to the beach. I'm excited to swim and play in the sand. That sounds like fun. What are you going to pack for the trip? I'm going to bring my swimsuit, some sunscreen, and a hat to protect my face from the sun. That's a good idea. What else are you going to do on the trip? We're going to go to some restaurants and try different kinds of food. I also want to go on a boat ride. That sounds like a great adventure. What do you like to do on holidays? I like to relax and spend time with my family. What about you? I like to read books and go for walks. Thanks for talking about your holiday plans. You're welcome. It was nice talking with you. Gas Station Hi Bob, how are you today? Hello Alice, I'm good, thank you. How about you? I'm fine too, thanks. I wanted to ask you, how do you buy fuel at a gas station in English? It's quite easy, Alice. 
When you go to a gas station, you can simply say, I would like to buy some fuel, please. I see. And how do I ask for a specific amount of fuel or money? You can say, could I have $20 worth of gas, please, or please give me 10 liters of fuel. That's clear. What if I want to pay with a credit card or cash? You can ask, can I pay with my credit card, or do you accept cash? Great. And if I need help at the gas station, what can I say? You can ask, excuse me, could you help me with the pump, please? Thanks, Bob. That's very helpful. What about when I need to find a gas station? What should I ask? You can ask someone, excuse me, can you tell me where the nearest gas station is? Perfect. And if I want to know if the gas station has a restroom or a store? You can ask, does this gas station have a restroom, or is there a store here? Thank you, Bob. You're a great help. Do you have any other tips for me? Just remember to be polite and use please and thank you when asking for help or making requests. And don't worry, most people are happy to help. Thanks a lot, Bob. I feel more confident now. I'll keep practicing. You're welcome, Alice. If you have any more questions, feel free to ask. Good luck with your English. Thank you, Bob. Have a nice day. You too, Alice. Take care. At the bakery. Hi, how are you? Hi, I'm good, thank you. How about you? I'm fine too. Do you want to go to the bakery today? Yes, I would love to. What do you want to eat there? I want to eat a chocolate cake and drink a milky coffee. What about you? I would like to have a grape cookie with a cup of coffee. That sounds nice. We can also meet our friends there. Yes, it's a great idea. We can talk and have fun together. Do you know if anyone has a birthday soon? I think Sarah's birthday is next week. We can celebrate it at the bakery. That's perfect. We can surprise her with a cake and a small party. She will be very happy. Let's invite our other friends too. Yes, let's make a list of who we want to invite. We can invite Tom, Lucy, and Mike. Do you want to invite anyone else? Let's also invite Emma and Sam. They are good friends with Sarah. Great, I will call them and tell them about the surprise party. Thank you. Let's meet at the bakery at 4 p.m. today. Perfect. See you later. Goodbye. Goodbye, see you. Gas Station 2 Hello, how are you? Hi, I'm good, thank you. How about you? I'm fine, thanks. Are you at the gas station now? Yes, I am. I need to get some gas for my car. What kind of gas do you need? I need petrol. My car uses petrol. How much petrol does your car need? I think it needs about 30 liters. How much does petrol cost now? It costs $1.5 per liter. That's not too expensive. No, it's not. I'm happy with the price. How do you pay for the petrol? I use my credit card. It's very easy. That's good. Do you like your car? Yes, I do. It's a nice car. What color is your car? My car is red. Red is a nice color. Yes, 
I like it a lot. Do you drive to work every day? No, I take the bus to work. Why do you take the bus? It's cheaper and better for the environment. That's true. How long does it take to get to work? It takes about 30 minutes. That's not too long. No, it's not. I can read a book or listen to music on the bus. That sounds nice. What time do you go to work? I go to work at 8 o'clock in the morning. What time do you finish work? I finish work at 5 o'clock in the evening. Do you like your job? Yes, I do. I have a good boss and nice co-workers. That's great. What do you do for fun? I like to watch movies and play soccer. I like to watch movies, too. What is your favorite movie? My favorite movie is The Lion King. I like that movie, too. It's a good story. Yes, it is. Do you have a favorite movie? My favorite movie is Toy Story. That's a fun movie. I like it, too. I'm glad you like it. Do you have a favorite soccer team? Yes, I do. My favorite team is Barcelona. I like Barcelona, too. They play good soccer. Yes, they do. It's fun to watch them play. I agree. Well, it was nice talking to you. Yes, it was nice talking to you, too. Have a great day. You too, have a great day. Goodbye. Goodbye. A discussion on the Harbin Ice and Snow Festival in China. Hello Mary, have you ever heard about the Harbin Ice and Snow Festival in China? Hi James, I've heard about it, but I don't know much. Can you tell me more? Absolutely, it's one of the biggest winter festivals in the world. It takes place in Harbin, a city in northeastern China, every year. It usually starts in January and lasts for about a month, but the exact dates can vary depending on the weather. That sounds interesting. What happens during the festival? The festival features massive ice and snow sculptures. Artists from all over the world come to create these sculptures. Some of them are small, but others can be as tall as a building. Wow, that must be a sight to see. How do they make these sculptures? They use blocks of ice that they take from the Songhua River, which freezes over in the winter. For the snow sculptures, they pack snow into blocks. Then, they carve these blocks into different shapes. That's fascinating. What else can visitors do at the festival? Besides admiring the sculptures, visitors can enjoy ice lantern shows, ice skating, and other winter activities. There are also ice hotels where you can stay. Ice hotels? That sounds cold. Yes, it does. But don't worry, the beds are made of ice but are covered with warm reindeer skins, blankets, and sleeping bags. That's a relief. Is there anything special about the festival's location, Harbin? Indeed, Harbin is known as the Ice City. It's famous for its extremely cold winters, which makes it the perfect place for this festival. Harbin also has strong influences from Russia because it's close to the Russian border. You can see this influence in the city's architecture and food. That's very interesting. I'd love to go there someday. It's definitely worth a visit. Just remember to dress warmly. I'll keep that in mind. Thanks for telling me about the Harbin Ice and Snow Festival, James. I learned a lot. You're welcome, Mary. I'm glad I could share this with you. If you have any other questions about it, feel free to ask. 
Thank you, James. I appreciate it. Have a great day. You too, Mary. Take care. Thrilling adventure in the Amazon rainforest, you won't believe what happened. Hi Emma, did I ever tell you about the time my friend Isabella and I had an incredible adventure in the Amazon rainforest? Hi Jack, no, you didn't. I would love to hear about it. How did you end up in the Amazon? It started as a backpacking trip. We both had always wanted to explore South America, and the Amazon rainforest was on top of our list. It's one of the most diverse ecosystems on the planet. That sounds amazing. But I can imagine it might be a bit dangerous. Yes, it can be. We had to prepare well and get all the necessary vaccinations. And we also hired a local guide to help us navigate through the dense forest. That seems sensible. So, what happened in the forest? One day, while we were trekking, we encountered a group of capybaras, the world's largest rodents. They were surprisingly friendly. Capybaras? That must have been a sight. What else did you see? We saw many birds, insects, and other wildlife. But the most exciting part was when we came across an ancient, abandoned temple hidden deep within the forest. A temple in the Amazon? That's incredible. What was it like? It was partly covered in vines and moss. It looked like it hadn't been disturbed for centuries. We couldn't believe our eyes. That sounds like something out of an adventure movie. Did you go inside? Yes, we did, with our guide leading the way. Inside, there were old stone carvings and what looked like an ancient map. That's astounding. How did you feel in that moment? We were both in awe. It was a reminder of how old and rich the history of that region is. It sounds like an unforgettable experience. Thanks for sharing, Jack. You're welcome, Emma. I'm glad I could share our adventure with you. Thank you, Jack. Your stories are always so exciting. I'm happy you enjoy them, Emma. There's always an adventure to be had if you're willing to look for it. I'll remember that, Jack. Thanks again. No problem, Emma. If you have any more questions about it, feel free to ask. Enjoy your day. Thank you, Jack. You too, have a great day. Sharing the experience of giving a conference in London. Hi Mary, how are you doing today? Hi James, I'm doing well. Thank you. How about you? I'm good, thank you. I just got back from London, where I gave a conference. It was quite an experience. That sounds exciting. What was the conference about? It was about advancements in artificial intelligence and its implications for the future. I had the opportunity to meet some of the leading minds in the field. That's fascinating. What was your presentation about? My presentation was about the ethical considerations in AI development. It's a topic I feel strongly about and was thrilled to share my thoughts with a receptive audience. I can imagine it was well received. How did you prepare for it? Well, I had to do a lot of research. I also rehearsed my speech numerous times to ensure I was confident and clear in my delivery. Preparation is key when it comes to public speaking. Absolutely, I agree. How did you feel giving the presentation? I was a bit nervous at first, but once I got started, I felt more comfortable. It's always inspiring to share your knowledge and engage in discussions with people who share similar interests. That's true. How was the response from the audience? It was very positive. Many people came up to me afterward to discuss my presentation further. Some even expressed interest in collaborating on future projects. That must have felt rewarding. How did you find London? London is a great city, filled with history and culture. 
I also enjoyed the food and the hospitality of the people. I would definitely love to go back. I'm sure it was a memorable trip. Did you have time for sightseeing? Yes, I did. I visited the British Museum, the Tower of London, and even took a ride on the London Eye. The views of the city from up there were amazing. That sounds like a fantastic experience. Any tips for someone planning to give a conference? Yes, definitely. Start preparing early, understand your audience, and be passionate about your topic. And of course, take some time to enjoy the city you're in. Great advice, James. Thank you for sharing your experience. My pleasure, Mary. It's always good to share experiences and learn from each other. Absolutely, I couldn't agree more. Have a great day, James. The Power of Actions, Reaping What You Sow Hi Emma, have you ever heard the phrase, you reap what you sow? Hello Jack, yes, I've heard it before. It means that our actions determine the results we get, right? Exactly. It's like planting seeds. If you plant apple seeds, you can't expect oranges to grow. The same applies to our actions and behavior. That's a good analogy. So, if we're kind, helpful, and respectful to others, we can expect the same in return? Yes, generally speaking. But it's also important to remember that this concept isn't a guarantee. Sometimes, despite our good actions, we might face challenges or difficult people. That's true, Jack. But even then, doesn't maintaining a positive attitude and approach benefit us in the long run? Absolutely. It helps build character and resilience. Plus, our actions often influence the people around us. If we're consistently kind and respectful, others may start to behave the same way. I like that perspective. I guess it also means that we should be mindful of our actions, even when we're upset or frustrated. Yes, because negative actions can also have consequences. If we're constantly rude or inconsiderate, we're likely to lose friends and miss opportunities. That makes sense. Our actions truly do shape our relationships and experiences. It's like a mirror reflecting our behavior. I couldn't have said it better, Emma. The, you reap what you sow, concept is a reminder for us to be mindful of our actions and to strive to do good. I completely agree, Jack. It encourages accountability and fosters empathy. It's a principle I want to incorporate more in my daily life. Me too, Emma. And remember, every day is a new opportunity to plant seeds of positivity. Indeed, Jack. Let's do our best to sow good seeds. Bearded Lady Goes Viral on Social Media Hi Elizabeth, have you been online today? Hello Charles, yes, I have. Why do you ask? There's something trending on social media that has caught my attention. It's about a woman with a beard who is embracing her uniqueness and has gained a lot of followers. Oh, I think I saw something about that. She seems to be challenging conventional beauty standards and promoting body positivity, isn't she? Yes, that's correct. Her message seems to be resonating with a lot of people. That's a powerful message. I think it's great that she is using her platform to spread positivity and acceptance. I agree. Social media can sometimes focus too much on perfection. It's refreshing to see someone who is genuine and authentic. Absolutely, Charles. It's important to remember that everyone is unique in their own way, and it's our differences that make us special. Yes, and it's courageous of her to share her story. She might be helping others who are also struggling with acceptance. I believe she is. By sharing her story, she's showing others that it's okay to be different and to love yourself just the way you are. It's great to see the positive impact she's having. 
but I wonder how she deals with negative comments or criticism. I'm sure it's not easy. But it seems like she's focusing on the positive and not letting negativity bring her down. That's a lesson we could all learn from. Definitely. It's a reminder to be kind to one another and respect our differences. Yes, Charles. After all, everyone has their own story and struggles. What we see on social media is just a small part of a person's life. True, Elizabeth. It's important not to judge others based on appearances. And it's equally important to be kind to ourselves and embrace our own uniqueness. I couldn't agree more, Charles. This discussion has been enlightening. It certainly has, Elizabeth. I'm glad we had this chat. Me too, Charles. It's always nice to learn from each other. Both Charles and Elizabeth agree that the conversation has given them a fresh perspective on body positivity and the power of social media in creating awareness. They look forward to more such discussions and learning experiences. Revolutionizing your home, unveiling innovations in kitchen design. Hi Elizabeth, how are you? Hello Charles, I'm fine, thank you. How about you? I'm doing well, thanks. I was just reading an article about how innovations in kitchen design are revolutionizing the way we live. Have you noticed these changes? Absolutely, Charles. The advances in technology and design have made a significant impact on our kitchens. For example, smart appliances are becoming increasingly popular. That's true. I've seen refrigerators that can track your groceries and ovens that can be controlled from your phone. Exactly, Charles. And it's not just about the technology. The design and layout of kitchens have also evolved. Open-plan kitchens that merge with the living space have become quite trendy. I see. That certainly fosters a more social cooking experience. I've also noticed a trend towards more sustainable kitchen designs. Absolutely. There's a growing focus on using eco-friendly materials and energy-efficient appliances. Many people are also growing their own herbs in indoor kitchen gardens. That's fascinating. It seems like the kitchen has truly become the heart of the home. What other innovations are making a splash in kitchen design? Another popular trend is the integration of advanced storage solutions. These can range from pull-out spice racks to custom-built pantry organizers. It's all about maximizing space and keeping things tidy. That sounds incredibly practical. It's clear that these innovations are changing the way we interact with our kitchens. Absolutely, Charles. And as technology continues to advance, I believe we'll see even more exciting developments in the future. I can't wait to see what's next. This conversation has certainly opened my eyes to the importance of kitchen design. I'm glad to hear that, Charles. It's always exciting to see how design can improve our everyday lives. Indeed, Elizabeth. I'll definitely keep an eye out for the latest kitchen design trends. Sounds like a plan, Charles. It's been a pleasure discussing this with you. Likewise, Elizabeth. Have a great day. You too, Charles. Take care. In this conversation, Charles... Can I help you? Do you understand? Can you repeat it? He repaired his house. How is it going? We speak English. She is reading a book. How do I look? How's it going? 
How much does it cost? I have no idea. What a nice day. He is looking for a job. He looks very healthy. I'm very proud of you. Who are they? What do you think? What's your name? Where are you from? Where are you staying? I'm staying at a house. I'm staying with my friend. Where are you going? I'm going to the hotel. Is there a restaurant near here? How can I go to the town center? Can you please help me? Why did you come to London? Do you have anything to declare? I want to go to this address. Have a nice journey. Can you show me the way on the map? Do you have a map of this area? How far is it? Where's the nearest bookshop? Can I use your phone? Where is passport control? Where is the customs? I have lost my luggage. Describe your luggage please. How much money do you have? What's in the bag? Where is the bus stop? Where is your ticket? Is he a teacher? He is a teacher. Where did she go? She went to school. Did she go to school? What can I do for you? What did you do yesterday? Do you like Indian food? Yes, I do. It's my favorite. What movie did you see last night? What time do you leave work? What city can we go to? Where does Jane eat breakfast? Where do Tom and Jane live? 
Where does Tom go after the school? When do you go to the cinema? When does he leave home? When do the students study? Could you help me? Could you tell me where the bank is? Do you think I could see one of the doctors? Could I see one of the doctors? Can I make an appointment? Can I speak to the manager? Can I see the menu? Can you swim? Can they speak English? Can you see the screen? What time do you have lunch? What time do you have dinner? What time did you arrive home yesterday? What time do you have get up tomorrow? Who goes to the office every day? Who watches TV in the evenings? Who do you love? Who did you see at the party? Who does Tom call every night? Have you got any money? Yes, I think. I've got some in my pocket. Have you got any pens? Yes, I think I've got some in my desk. How are you today? Why are you crying? Do you feel like going to the cinema this evening? Would you like to go to the cinema this evening? It's cold out. It was very cold yesterday morning. It's even very cold in May. Where are you traveling from? What are you looking for? What are you worrying about? Who are you talking to? What shall I pay for this with? What is she looking at? How did you find my house? Why are you so unhappy? How many students are there in the classroom? How many books did you read last month? How much money do you want? How much salt do we need?
How much time is there left? How long is it from London to Paris? How long did you work in that company? Why did she buy an expensive car? Hello. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Good night. Goodbye. My name is Jane. Nice to meet you. Have a good trip. Please call me. Good luck. What is your name? What is your surname? How is your surname pronounced? How is your name written? Do you have a nickname? What do you do? Where do you work? How are you? Do you come from London? Live your life. No matter what they say. Do what makes you happy. Did you feed the hunter today? Yeah. I fed him earlier today. Nice. Can you give him a bathe later? Sure. I'll do that later. Thank you. You know you need to take him to the vet appointment next week? I know. What time do we need to be there? You need to be there at 9 in the morning. Okay, I got it. Do you smell that? Yes, it's disgusting. I hate cigarette smoke. I can't stand it. It smells bad, really bad. Some smokers think they are cool. I think it's pathetic. A cigarette controls them. Don't, Don't smoke, smoke cigarettes. cigarettes. It's, it's really, really bad, bad for, for your health. health. Are you going to be in town this weekend? I'll be in town. Do you have plans for the weekend? No, I don't have any plans. Sunday is Tina's birthday, and we are throwing her a party. I would love to come to the party. Where are you going to have it? What time will it start? It's going to be at Phil's apartment building. It will start at 5 p.m. It's going to be fun. Isn't there a pool in Phil's apartment? I totally forgot. It's going to be a pool party. Don't forget to bring your trunks. I won't forget it. And I'll get a big present for Tina. Hello, try to repeat after us. Let's get started. Do you want to go out tonight? Sure. Where do you want to go? How about a film? I can't wait to see the new Jackie Chan film. I don't like watching action movies, they always seem to be the same. Can't you arrange to see it with someone else another time? Okay. Well, we could go to Jim's party. That's fine, but only if you promise to be nice to him. I'll try, but it's very difficult. I just don't like his friends. You'll have to ignore them, or pretend to like them. 
If you can't manage to do either of those, then I'm not coming. Okay, what else could we do? Why don't we just decide to stay in? I don't mind ordering some food. Jim's parties are usually pretty useless anyway. You are right. Let's order a pizza. Jim phoned while you were out. What did he say? He said he bought the four tickets for the concert tonight. Are you serious? I was afraid they might be sold out. Did he say anything else? He asked if you'd arranged to pick up Pam on the way. I said I didn't know, and that you'd phone back when you got in. This concert is going to be great. Are you excited? I'm excited. Aren't you going to call Jim? Okay, I'll do that now. Hi. Hey. Let's start. Hello, Dwight. How are you? Very well, thank you. And you? I'm fine. It's good to see you again. I'm very happy to see you too. Angela, what do you want to do this winter? Well, I can tell you one thing, I don't want to work all winter. Me neither. Well then, what do you want to do? I want to go to Iceland. I want to see the Northern Lights. Have you ever been there? No, I have not. It would be amazing to go there with you. We should definitely go there. Somebody's playing the piano. It sounds nice, doesn't it? I wish I could play a musical instrument. Don't you play guitar? No, but my brother does, and he's pretty good at it. I took piano lessons for a couple of years, but I never learned to play very well. I guess I don't have any musical talent. That's not true. I heard you sing very well. What's the weather like in your hometown? It's always quite hot, especially in summer. How far is your hometown from here? It takes about five hours by car. What's the nightlife like in your hometown? It's not bad, but a little expensive. What about the shopping? What's it like? It is pretty interesting. There are a lot of nice shops. Hey. Hey everybody, what's up? Are you new around here? Yes, I am new in town. It's nice meeting you. I'm happy to meet you too. When did you move here? I moved here about two months ago. Do you like it here so far? I love it here. It's great. Welcome to the neighborhood. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Could you help me with something? How can I help you? I'm trying to find the mall. You don't know where it is? I've looked everywhere but I couldn't find it. The mall is right next to the theater. I don't know where the theater is either. Actually, I should go to the mall too. Do you want to go there together? Yeah, sure. That's very nice of you. Thank you. All right, let's go. I need to make an appointment. Are you going to see Dr. James? Never again. No way. I don't like him. He was not friendly at all during my last visit. What do you mean? What happened during your last visit? He was so rude. He answered none of my questions. He didn't even look at my face. I understand what you mean. Maybe he was in a bad mood that day. Because I know he is a good person. Hello. 
Are you ready? Let's start. Are you new here? Yes, I just started yesterday. Welcome aboard. My name is Jeff. I'm Amy. Nice to meet you. What are you going to be working on? I'm going to work on the finance team, but I haven't started yet. I'm still in training. Our planning team works with them closely. We'll work together sometimes. That's great news. I really look forward to working with you. Have you seen Kevin? I've been looking for him everywhere. I don't know. I haven't seen him all day. What's today's date? Today is the 3rd of September. Okay, it makes sense now. Why? Why is today's important? Today's Kevin's brother's birthday. He's probably in London today. I hope he returns on time. Otherwise, the boss is going to be really mad. Yeah, that's why I'm worried. Let's just hope that he will be at the table tomorrow. We should call him right now. Today's been a very educational day for me so far. Thank you. You are welcome. I hope together we will work for this company for a long time. Do you want to drink something together after work? I want to get to know you better. Sure. It would be great to drink some coffee with you. Hello, how are you today? Let's start. Did you ask your boss for a raise? Yes, I asked for $10 any hour more. The real question is, did you get it? No, I got $3. Oh no, that's too bad. I think it's alright for now. It's better than nothing, right? I visited my dad's office today. Did you like his new office? Yeah, I did. It's surprisingly big, and it has an amazing view. Then we had lunch at a Chinese restaurant. Did you like the food there? It was very delicious. You got any plans for the weekend? I really would like to go to that restaurant. I'm free this weekend. We can go there. After that we can go to the new Batman movie. What do you think? This is a great plan. I haven't told you what happened yesterday, have I? You haven't told me anything yet. I got the promotion I was expecting. Are you kidding? This is great news. I'm really excited about it. I have more responsibilities with my new position. You really deserve this promotion. Your hard work has finally paid up. I'm so happy for you. We should throw a party on Friday. Thank you very much. Do you really want to throw a party? Yeah, I do. You don't get promoted every day, do you? Hi. Hey, welcome to another episode of Daily Conversations. Don't forget, practice makes perfect. Let's start. It's extremely hot right now. It's not even noon, yet. I'm afraid it will get hotter. The heat is killing me. Why don't you turn on the air conditioner? I tried turning it on yesterday. It doesn't work. Why doesn't it work? What happened? I have no idea. It's broken. When is it going to be fixed? I called the repairman this morning. When will he be here? He said he was busy. He will come next week. Oh no. What are we going to do without an air conditioner? I don't know. I guess we will just pray for a colder weather. Are you going to be at the party this Friday? I haven't decided yet. 
Are you going to go? Yes, I'll be there. I heard it's going to be a lot of fun. Is it really? What time does the party start? The party starts at nine o'clock. I hope that you will go to the party. I'm not sure. Maybe I will go. Who else is going to be there? There will be a lot of people. Some of our friends will be there too. It's going to be a big party. It will be too crowded, so we probably won't come across them. There's going to be live music, drinks, and food at the party. That sounds like it's going to be fun. I'm definitely going to be there. See you at the party. Hi. Hello. Try to repeat after us. Good morning. I'm Megan Scott. Nice to meet you, Miss Scott. I'm Dwight Booker. Do you think you are qualified for secretary position? Do you think you are ready to work here? Tell me about yourself and your educational background. I've been living here in Toronto for five years. I've had secretarial training in business school. I'm a hardworking person, and I believe I can handle any kind of pressure. Time will show that. There will be a large volume of telephone calls, along with filing and fast typing. Do you think you can handle that? I've had a lot of training in each of those areas. I'll handle everything perfectly. This is a paper company. Have you ever done secretarial work for a paper company or anything similar? I can't say that I have, but I've worked as a secretary in some very busy offices, and I'm a fast learner, so I don't think that would be any problem. What's your schedule like, Dwight? I'm prepared to work full time, nine to five, from Monday to Friday. How would you feel about doing some overtime every now and then? Would you have a problem with that? I'm totally fine with that. Overtime wouldn't be a problem for me. Okay, Dwight. Your qualifications look very promising. Before we end today, do you have any questions for me? Yes. Can you tell me what benefits are available if I'm hired here? After you pass a two-month probationary period, you are entitled to enroll in our group medical plan, and also you'll have 15 vacation days and 15 sick days per year. That sounds great. Thank you, Miss Scott. Have a nice day. My name is Jane. I'm English, but I live in Barcelona, Spain. My father has a new job here. I love being in Barcelona because all the people here are really nice and helpful. I have got dark hair and big green eyes. I'm not very tall and I'm medium weight. I am a creative and hardworking person. I want to be a doctor, so I always study a lot. I like spending time alone. I also like watching movies and listening to music in my free time. Hi everyone, I'm Kevin. I'm new at this school, but I'm not new in London. I'm short and thin. I have got blue eyes and I wear glasses. I am a cheerful person. I really like telling funny stories and making jokes. But my teachers sometimes warn me to stop talking in the class because I am talkative. I can be selfish, but only for my car. My favorite activity is driving a car with my sister at weekends. I also enjoy surfing on the net. My name is Jane. I'm English, but I live in Barcelona, Spain. My father has a new job here. 
I love being in Barcelona. Because all the people here are really nice and helpful. I have got dark hair and big green eyes. I'm not very tall and I'm medium weight. I am a creative and hardworking person. I want to be a doctor, so I always study a lot. I like spending time alone. I also like watching movies and listening to music in my free time. Hi everyone. I'm Kevin. I'm new at this school. But I'm not new in London. I'm short and thin. I have got blue eyes and I wear glasses. I am a cheerful person. I really like telling funny stories and making jokes. But my teachers sometimes warn me to stop talking in the class because I'm talkative. I can be selfish but only for my car. My favorite activity is driving a car with my sister at weekends. I also enjoy surfing on the net. Hello. My name is Jane. I am 17 years old. I'm studying in high school. I have two sisters. My mother works at the bank. My father is a doctor. We have a beautiful house with a garden. I get up at 7 a.m. on weekdays. I wash my hands and face. My mother prepares breakfast. We have breakfast together as a family. My sister Mary is 9 years old, Isabella is 12 years old. My father drives us to school on the way to work. The first lesson starts at 9 o'clock. I have lunch in the canteen. I love toast. School ends at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. I go home by bus. I do the homework first. I help my mother prepare dinner. My father watches the news on TV. We have dinner as a family. After dinner, we drink tea in the garden. My sisters play games. I go to bed at 11 p.m. Before, I brush my teeth and read for half an hour. My sister Mary listens to music. And so another day ends. Hello. My name is Jane. I am 17 years old. I'm studying in high school. I have two sisters. My mother works at the bank. My father is a doctor. We have a beautiful house with a garden. I get up at 7 a.m. on weekdays. I wash my hands and face. My mother prepares breakfast. We have breakfast together as a family. My sister Mary is 9 years old, Isabella is 12 years old. My father drives us to school on the way to work. The first lesson starts at 9 o'clock. I have lunch in the canteen. I love toast. School ends at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. 
I go home by bus. I do the homework first. I help my mother prepare dinner. My father watches the news on TV. We have dinner as a family. After dinner, we drink tea in the garden. My sisters play games. I go to bed at 11 p.m. Before, I brush my teeth and read for half an hour. My sister Mary listens to music. And so another day ends. What is this? This is an apple. This is a fish. Newspaper. I only slept one hours. I have only two thousand dollars. He is a student. Kevin is a police officer. Jane is a doctor. They are students. I am a teacher. I am writing now. She is reading the newspaper. They are listening to music. I'm meeting Jane next Monday. Are you a teacher? Yes, I am a teacher. Are you a doctor? No, I am not a doctor. She is leaving London in two days. Do you take a bath every day? Yes, I do. What are you drinking? I am drinking cola. What do you have? I have a toast. What were they doing? Jane and David were dancing. Mary and Jane were eating sandwiches. How many keys are there? There are two keys. David and Kevin were playing cards. How many cups do you have? We have two cups. Jane has making models for 10 months. Have you ever seen a lion? Yes, I have. Where did you see it? I saw it in a zoo. He rarely goes out. Have you ever watched a basketball match? Yes, I have. When did you watch it? I watched it last Sunday. How often do you go to the cinema? I go to the cinema every weekend. I hardly ever go to the theater. The house is on the side of a hill. Can you tell me where is the dormitory? I'd like you to meet my friends. What do you think of your new boss? She wants him to be her friend. 
my uncle likes to go fishing. There is a computer in the office. Jane didn't feel comfortable with my friend. I can't play piano. I keep my money in the bank. I need to buy a new umbrella. How much does this cost? Do you have any shoes in my size? You are my best friend. Do you like science fiction movies? My brother likes old movies better. I can play the piano. Can I play some music? She loves blueberries. What is your job? What do you want to do? I met a friend of Jane's. She was born in London. I can play the guitar. How are things going? I like to play soccer. I caught the last bus. What happened to you? Do you play the guitar? I don't play the guitar. What do you think? I don't have time. What's your favorite movie? My favorite movie is Spider-Man. Never play on the road. Have you heard the news? I haven't heard anything. There are some flowers on the table. There are some books in the bag. What color is the book? The red bag is not near the radio. She is standing near the tree. Is there much milk in the glass? There is a lot of milk in the glass. I am writing with my right hand. I have found a pencil. I stayed home all day. She looked all around. David wants to be a pilot. The man is sitting in the room. Don't be late for the train. The dog is sleeping under the chair. I can't remember his name. I am coming from London. What did you buy? I bought a new car. I bought a t-shirt. Do you good sleep? Where can I buy some groceries? I must buy some milk. I bought a new suit. Why did you buy this? My father is an engineer. This is my friend Jane. Let me introduce you my friend Kevin. Do you have a reservation? Would you like to see the menu? 
Do you need any napkins? She is going to eat a hot dog. He sells hot dogs. She is shopping. He knows how to use the bow. She is drinking coffee. He likes boiled egg. This painting is lovely. She sat next to him. Can you bring me a towel? Do you like bowling? Does she like strawberries? I love cows. Can you dive like him? She looked over my report. They work in a factory. I will go there even if it rains. His eyes are green. I've never flown in an airplane. She was holding a baseball bat. I'll be back by six o'clock. She said she had a slight cold. I left my gloves in the kitchen. His joy showed on his face. I have to go to the police station. The leaves fell. I think she's a great writer. This is a nice apartment. The island is warm all the year. They are classmates. Keep the dog out. They are hiding behind the curtain. We made pancakes for breakfast. The thief got away with the money. She has blonde hair. I can't find my history book. She's about the same height as him. She will leave the hospital soon. She gave him a big smile. I'd like to order some flowers. He is unable to buy a car. I'd like to reserve a table for two at six. How many pencils do you have? When is your birthday?
Roll the ball to me. He runs a shoe shop. Where's the nearest bus stop? He fed his dog at the same time every day. She didn't like the horse at first. Jake runs fast. He reads before bedtime. Do you need a ride? She taught him how to play the piano. Tom doesn't like bread. Oranges have a lot of vitamin C. I'll carry this briefcase for you. I think it's highly unlikely that I'll ever see my stolen motorcycle again. They're going to eat apples. Is there a doctor in the house? He is taking a walk. The castle is beautiful. How high is that mountain? The furniture was dusty. Please open the bottle. Playing the guitar is fun. She said goodbye to him. My father gave his compass to me. I enjoy working on the computer. I got a new computer for my birthday. When the weather's bad, I read books. When it's raining, I like to draw pictures of animals. I go training every evening. Where did you go for your holidays? Do you have any pets? Do you live in a house or an apartment? When is your birthday? How old are you? Do you have any children? How much will you give me for my old car? I've wrecked my car. My car has broken down. You must drive carefully. It was cold yesterday. It is sunny today. It will be cloudy tomorrow. Do you have a compass? Would you like a glass of juice? Would you like tea or coffee? Do you drink tea with milk? Our teacher is good at playing football. Our dad is good at playing basketball. I played basketball on the school team. This house is very cheap. 
This house is very expensive. Mice like cheese very much. Mice have very small eyes. The sun is shining. Can I use your phone? I need something to drink. I would like bread with cheese. I like to eat fruit. I like to eat apple. Are you going to take a plane or train? Did you send me flowers? Those flowers are beautiful. Do you have a pencil? Do you have a house? Have you eaten at that restaurant? There is a new restaurant opening across the park. Can I have a glass of water please? Can I have the bill please? You have a very nice car. I bought a new car last week. My favorite drink is tea. My favorite drink is coffee. Your house is very nice. My house is very big. What color is that car? That restaurant is not expensive. My cell phone doesn't work. What is your cell phone number? What is your email address? What type of music do you like? 30 Basic English Phrases Can I switch off the lights? Can I open the window? How are you feeling? I don't feel good. Where does it hurt? Do you have a fever? What's bothering you? How long are you going to stay? How long have you been here? I'm working on a big project. I'm working on my homework. I'm working on a new car project. How much does this cost? How much is that? How old are you? How tall are you? Would you like anything to drink? Do you want something to eat or drink? Can I get you a drink? I would like to order my food now. Where is there a bank around here? I want to change money. I want to open an account. Do you have any money? 
Can you lend me some money? How can I help you? I need your help. How often have you been here? When did you see him last? I last saw Jane last weekend. Welcome to English Education Channel. The sun is shining. The sun is shining. Can I use your phone? Can I use your phone? I need something to drink. I need something to drink. I would like bread with cheese. I would like bread with cheese. I like to eat fruit. I like to eat fruit. I like to eat apple. I like to eat apple. Are you going to take a plane or train? Are you going to take a plane or train? Did you send me flowers? Did you send me flowers? Those flowers are beautiful. Those flowers are beautiful. Do you have a pencil? Do you have a pencil? Do you have a house? Do you have a house? Have you eaten at that restaurant? Have you eaten at that restaurant? There is a new restaurant opening across the park. There is a new restaurant opening across the park. Can I have a glass of water please? Can I have a glass of water please? Can I have the bill please? Can I have the bill please? You have a very nice car. You have a very nice car. I bought a new car last week. I bought a new car last week. My favorite drink is tea. My favorite drink is tea. My favorite drink is coffee. My favorite drink is coffee. Your house is very nice. Your house is very nice. My house is very big. 
My house is very big. What color is that car? What color is that car? That restaurant is not expensive. That restaurant is not expensive. My cell phone doesn't work. My cell phone doesn't work. What is your cell phone number? What is your cell phone number? What is your email address? What is your email address? What type of music do you like? What type of music do you like? I enjoy working on the computer. I enjoy working on the computer. I got a new computer for my birthday. I got a new computer for my birthday. When the weather's bad, I read books. When the weather's bad, I read books. When it's raining, I like to draw pictures of animals. When it's raining, I like to draw pictures of animals. I go training every evening. I go training every evening. Where did you go for your holidays? Where did you go for your holidays? Do you have any pets? Do you have any pets? Do you live in a house or an apartment? Do you live in a house or an apartment? When is your birthday? When is your birthday? How old are you? How old are you? Do you have any children? Do you have any children? How much will you give me for my old car? How much will you give me for my old car? I've wrecked my car. I've wrecked my car. My car has broken down. My car has broken down. You must drive carefully. You must drive carefully. It was cold yesterday. It was cold yesterday. 
It is sunny today. It is sunny today. It will be cloudy tomorrow. It will be cloudy tomorrow. Do you have a compass? Do you have a compass? Would you like a glass of juice? Would you like a glass of juice? Would you like tea or coffee? Would you like tea or coffee? Do you drink tea with milk? Do you drink tea with milk? Our teacher is good at playing football. Our teacher is good at playing football. Our dad is good at playing basketball. Our dad is good at playing basketball. I played basketball on the school team. I played basketball on the school team. This house is very cheap. This house is very cheap. This house is very expensive. This house is very expensive. Mice like cheese very much. Mice like cheese very much. Mice have very small eyes. Mice have very small eyes. Welcome to our YouTube channel. We had a meal in an expensive restaurant. We had a meal in an expensive restaurant. How many meals a day do you have? How many meals a day do you have? Here's an apple. Just one apple. Here's an apple. Just one apple. Did you enjoy your vacation in Hawaii? Did you enjoy your vacation in Hawaii? What did you do in the summer? What did you do in the summer? I like summery weather. I like summery weather. We usually go on holiday in the summer. We usually go on holiday in the summer. I went to Camp Blue to learn how to swim. I went to Camp Blue to learn how to swim. It's difficult to swim in the waves. It's difficult to swim in the waves.
I like going swimming in the summer. I like going swimming in the summer. Have you ever been on a school trip? Have you ever been on a school trip? Have you ever been to England? Have you ever been to England? London is the capital of England and the United Kingdom. London is the capital of England and the United Kingdom. I made a trip to London last weekend. I made a trip to London last weekend. He met many friends on his travels. He met many friends on his travels. How long are you staying? How long are you staying? Where do you stay in England? Where are you stay in England? Did you have any trouble finding the hotel? Did you have any trouble finding the hotel? Would you have a room for tonight please? Would you have a room for tonight please? I'd like to book a room please. I'd like to book a room please. Our hotel is not responsible for lost or stolen articles. Our hotel is not responsible for lost or stolen articles. How much is a single room per night? How much is a single room per night? Do you serve breakfast? Do you serve breakfast? Is there a restaurant in the hotel? Is there a restaurant in the hotel? Is there anything you would recommend? Is there anything you would recommend? Could I see the menu, please? Could I see the menu, please? I'd like the soup, please. I'd like the soup, please. Excuse me, but my soup is cold. Excuse me, but my soup is cold. Could I have some more bread, please? Could I have some more bread, please? Could I have the bill, please? Could I have the bill, please? Live your life. No matter what they say, do what makes you happy. Did you feed the hunter today? 
Yeah, I fed him earlier today. Nice. Can you give him a bathe later? Sure, I'll do that later. Thank you. You know you need to take him to the vet appointment next week? I know. What time do we need to be there? You need to be there at 9 in the morning. Okay, I got it. Do you smell that? Yes, it's disgusting. I hate cigarette smoke. I can't stand it. It smells bad, really bad. Some smokers think they are cool. I think it's pathetic. A cigarette controls them. Don't, Don't smoke, smoke cigarettes. cigarettes. It's, it's really, really bad, bad for, for your health. health. Are you going to be in town this weekend? I'll be in town. Do you have plans for the weekend? No, I don't have any plans. Sunday is Tina's birthday, and we are throwing her a party. I would love to come to the party. Where are you going to have it? What time will it start? It's going to be at Phil's apartment building. It will start at 5 p.m. It's going to be fun. Isn't there a pool in Phil's apartment? I totally forgot. It's going to be a pool party. Don't forget to bring your trunks. I won't forget it. And I'll get a big present for Tina. Hello, try to repeat after us. Let's get started. Do you want to go out tonight? Sure, where do you want to go? How about a film? I can't wait to see the new Jackie Chan film. I don't like watching action movies, they always seem to be the same. Can't you arrange to see it with someone else another time? Okay. Well, we could go to Jim's party. That's fine, but only if you promise to be nice to him. I'll try, but it's very difficult. I just don't like his friends. You'll have to ignore them, or pretend to like them. If you can't manage to do either of those, then I'm not coming. Okay, what else could we do? Why don't we just decide to stay in? I don't mind ordering some food. Jim's parties are usually pretty useless anyway. You are right. Let's order a pizza. Jim phoned while you were out. What did he say? He said he'd bought the four tickets for the concert tonight. Are you serious? I was afraid they might be sold out. Did he say anything else? He asked if you'd arrange to pick up Pam on the way. I said I didn't know, and that you'd phone back when you got in. This concert is going to be great. Are you excited? I'm excited. Aren't you going to call Jim? Okay, I'll do that now. Hi. Hey. Let's start. Hello, Dwight. How are you? Very well, thank you. And you? I'm fine. It's good to see you again. I'm very happy to see you too. Angela, what do you want to do this winter? Well, I can tell you one thing, I don't want to work all winter. Me neither. Well then, what do you want to do? I want to go to Iceland. I want to see the Northern Lights. Have you ever been there? No, I have not. It would be amazing to go there with you. We should definitely go there. Somebody's playing the piano. It sounds nice, doesn't it? I wish I could play a musical instrument. Don't you play guitar? No, but my brother does, and he's pretty good at it. I took piano lessons for a couple of years, but I never learned to play very well. I guess I don't have any musical talent. That's not true. I heard you sing very well. 
What's the weather like in your hometown? It's always quite hot, especially in summer. How far is your hometown from here? It takes about five hours by car. What's the nightlife like in your hometown? It's not bad, but a little expensive. What about the shopping? What's it like? It is pretty interesting. There are a lot of nice shops. Hey. Hey everybody, what's up? Are you new around here? Yes, I am new in town. It's nice meeting you. I'm happy to meet you too. When did you move here? I moved here about two months ago. Do you like it here so far? I love it here. It's great. Welcome to the neighborhood. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Could you help me with something? How can I help you? I'm trying to find the mall. You don't know where it is? I've looked everywhere but I couldn't find it. The mall is right next to the theater. I don't know where the theater is either. Actually, I should go to the mall too. Do you want to go there together? Yeah, sure. That's very nice of you. Thank you. All right, let's go. I need to make an appointment. Are you going to see Dr. James? Never again. No way. I don't like him. He was not friendly at all during my last visit. What do you mean? What happened during your last visit? He was so rude. He answered none of my questions. He didn't even look at my face. I understand what you mean. Maybe he was in a bad mood that day. Because I know he is a good person. Hello, are you ready? Let's start. Are you new here? Yes, I just started yesterday. Welcome aboard. My name is Jeff. I'm Amy. Nice to meet you. What are you going to be working on? I'm going to work on the finance team, but I haven't started yet. I'm still in training. Our planning team works with them closely. We'll work together sometimes. That's great news. I really look forward to working with you. Have you seen Kevin? I've been looking for him everywhere. I don't know. I haven't seen him all day. What's today's date? Today is the 3rd of September. Okay, it makes sense now. Why? Why is today's important? Today's Kevin's brother's birthday. He's probably in London today. I hope he returns on time. Otherwise, the boss is going to be really mad. Yeah, that's why I'm worried. Let's just hope that he will be at the table tomorrow. We should call him right now. Today's been a very educational day for me so far. Thank you. You are welcome. I hope together we will work for this company for a long time. Do you want to drink something together after work? I want to get to know you better. Sure. It would be great to drink some coffee with you. Hello, how are you today? Let's start. Did you ask your boss for a raise? Yes, I asked for $10 any hour more. The real question is, did you get it? No, I got $3. Oh no, that's too bad. I think it's alright for now. It's better than nothing, right? I visited my dad's office today. Did you like his new office? 
Yeah, I did. It's surprisingly big, and it has an amazing view. Then we had lunch at a Chinese restaurant. Did you like the food there? It was very delicious. You got any plans for the weekend? I really would like to go to that restaurant. I'm free this weekend. We can go there. After that we can go to the new Batman movie. What do you think? This is a great plan. I haven't told you what happened yesterday, have I? You haven't told me anything yet. I got the promotion I was expecting. Are you kidding? This is great news. I'm really excited about it. I have more responsibilities with my new position. You really deserve this promotion. Your hard work has finally paid up. I'm so happy for you. We should throw a party on Friday. Thank you very much. Do you really want to throw a party? Yeah, I do. You don't get promoted every day, do you? Hi. Hey, welcome to another episode of Daily Conversations. Don't forget, practice makes perfect. Let's start. It's extremely hot right now. It's not even noon, yet. I'm afraid it will get hotter. The heat is killing me. Why don't you turn on the air conditioner? I tried turning it on yesterday. It doesn't work. Why doesn't it work? What happened? I have no idea. It's broken. When is it going to be fixed? I called the repairman this morning. When will he be here? He said he was busy. He will come next week. Oh no. What are we going to do without an air conditioner? I don't know. I guess we will just pray for a colder weather. Are you going to be at the party this Friday? I haven't decided yet. Are you going to go? Yes, I'll be there. I heard it's going to be a lot of fun. Is it really? What time does the party start? The party starts at 9 o'clock. I hope that you will go to the party. I'm not sure. Maybe I will go. Who else is going to be there? There will be a lot of people. Some of our friends will be there too. It's going to be a big party. It will be too crowded, so we probably won't come across them. There's going to be live music, drinks and food at the party. That sounds like it's going to be fun. I'm definitely going to be there. See you at the party. Hi. Hello, try to repeat after us. Good morning, I'm Megan Scott. Nice to meet you Ms. Scott. I'm Dwight Booker. Do you think you are qualified for secretary position? Do you think you are ready to work here? Tell me about yourself and your educational background. I've been living here in Toronto for five years. I've had secretarial training in business school. I'm a hardworking person, and I believe I can handle any kind of pressure. Time will show that. There will be a large volume of telephone calls, along with filing and fast typing. Do you think you can handle that? I've had a lot of training in each of those areas. I'll handle everything perfectly. This is a paper company. Have you ever done secretarial work for a paper company, or anything similar? I can't say that I have. But I've worked as a secretary in some very busy offices, and I'm a fast learner, so I don't think that would be any problem. What's your schedule like, Dwight? I'm prepared to work full-time, 9 to 5, from Monday to Friday. How would you feel about doing some overtime every now and then? Would you have a problem with that? I'm totally fine with that. Overtime wouldn't be a problem for me. Okay, Dwight, your qualifications look very promising. Before we end today, do you have any questions for me? 
Yes, can you tell me what benefits are available, if I'm hired here? After you pass a two-month probationary period, you are entitled to enroll in our group medical plan, and also, you'll have 15 vacation days and 15 sick days per year. That sounds great. Thank you Ms. Scott. Have a nice day. 30 Basic English Phrases Can I switch off the lights? Can I open the window? How are you feeling? I don't feel good. Where does it hurt? Do you have a fever? What's bothering you? How long are you going to stay? How long have you been here? I'm working on a big project. I'm working on my homework. I'm working on a new car project. How much does this cost? How much is that? How old are you? How tall are you? Would you like anything to drink? Do you want something to eat or drink? Can I get you a drink? I would like to order my food now. Where is there a bank around here? I want to change money. I want to open an account. Do you have any money? Can you lend me some money? How can I help you? I need your help. How often have you been here? When did you see him last? I last saw Jane last weekend. The house has a brick roof. The house has a brick roof. Where do your parents live now? Where do your parents live now? They live in New York. They live in New York. Software is changing our lives. Software is changing our lives. Jane lives in an old apartment in the city center. Jane lives in an old apartment in the city center. I like cats. I like cats. I have a cat. I have a cat. Do you have a cat? Do you have a cat? Jane has a white cat. 
Jane has a white cat. We have a black cat. We have a black cat. Do you have a house? Do you have a house? Where is your house? Where is your house? We have a big house. We have a big house. The children were laughing. The children were laughing. Tom wanted a new bicycle. Tom wanted a new bicycle. All the girls are learning English. All the girls are learning English. I have to catch the bus today. I have to catch the bus today. I have to go back to London tomorrow. I have to go back to London tomorrow. Do you like dogs? Do you like dogs? This is my dog. This is my dog. We have a cat and a dog. We have a cat and a dog. The man hit the dog. The man hit the dog. The sea is blue. The sea is blue. Jane lives near the sea. Jane lives near the sea. The hotel is by the sea. The hotel is by the sea. He works at an office. He works at an office. He works on the computer. He works on the computer. Welcome. Let's start. She has got a raincoat. She has got a raincoat. I have five lessons on Wednesday. I have five lessons on Wednesday. We have a meeting next Thursday morning. We have a meeting next Thursday morning. I need cash. I need cash. She is always short of cash. She is always short of cash. She paid the balance of the invoice in cash. She paid the balance of the invoice in cash. 
The bank cashed her check. The bank cashed her check. Do you like the forest? Do you like the forest? Do you like going into the forests? Do you like going into the forests? The forest goes on for 10 miles. The forest goes on for 10 miles. What do you like the most about the forest? What do you like the most about the forest? What's the weather like? What's the weather like? What's the weather forecast? What's the weather forecast? Is it raining where you are? Is it raining where you are? How's the weather in London in winter? How's the weather in London in winter? The sun is shining in New York. The sun is shining in New York. The sun rises in the east. The sun rises in the east. I could feel the warm sunshine on my back. I could feel the warm sunshine on my back. Water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. Water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. Jane and Tom met in the park. Jane and Tom met in the park. Are there any dogs in the park? Are there any dogs in the park? How many dogs are there in the park? How many dogs are there in the park? That thin girl is drinking milk now. That thin girl is drinking milk now. Is there much milk in the fridge? Is there much milk in the fridge? Please return all empty milk bottles. Please return all empty milk bottles. I would like a little milk for my coffee. I would like a little milk for my coffee. This is a nice cup of tea. This is a nice cup of tea. She drinks tea daily. She drinks tea daily. He drinks tea every day. He drinks tea every day. Welcome to English Education Channel. We sometimes play football together. 
We sometimes play football together. What's your favorite sport? What's your favorite sport? Do you prefer to watch sports or play them? Do you prefer to watch sports or play them? I play football every weekend. I play football every weekend. She never plays football. She never plays football. She is a good tennis player. She is a good tennis player. I don't know how to play tennis. I don't know how to play tennis. I like the carpet in my room. I like the carpet in my room. Money doesn't bring happiness. Money doesn't bring happiness. I love flowers. I love flowers. Why did you buy flowers? Why did you buy flowers? Those flowers are beautiful. Those flowers are beautiful. We picked flowers in the garden. We picked flowers in the garden. The mother hugged her child. The mother hugged her child. I climbed up the ladder. I climbed up the ladder. I was climbing the mountain. I was climbing the mountain. I like climbing mountains. I like climbing mountains. I am thinking of going to the mountains. I am thinking of going to the mountains. The mountains are beautiful. The mountains are beautiful. The Nile is the longest river in the world. The Nile is the longest river in the world. A man walked into a hotel. A man walked into a hotel. I'm at the hotel. I'm at the hotel. Can you recommend a hotel? Can you recommend a hotel? Is there a hotel around here? Is there a hotel around here? The swimming pool is on the main floor. The swimming pool is on the main floor. There are hotels in big cities and small towns. 
There are hotels in big cities and small towns. We can leave our luggage at the hotel. We can leave our luggage at the hotel. I can't get in the house. I've lost my keys. I can't get in the house. I've lost my keys. Have you ever been to London? Have you ever been to London? Have you ever been to New York? Have you ever been to New York? We have bought a new car this week. We have bought a new car this week. Welcome to English Education Channel. People watch TV in the living room. People watch TV in the living room. We have a single room available. We have a single room available. I love doing exercises. I love doing exercises. What color are your eyes? What color are your eyes? What color is your hair? What color is your hair? What is your favorite sport? What is your favorite sport? Do they live in Moscow? Do they live in Moscow? Does she live in London? Does she live in London? This is a girl. This is a girl. She is going to school. She is going to school. This is a boy. <laughs> this is a boy. Kevin is a good boy. Kevin is a good boy. He is a naughty boy. He is a naughty boy. This is a police car. This is a police car. This is a school bus. This is a school bus. She has written a new book. She has written a new book. The girl eating a banana and smiles. The girl eating a banana and smiles. The boy is washing hands. The boy is washing hands.
The girl is washing hands with soap in the bathroom. The girl is washing hands with soap in the bathroom. The woman is selling colorful textiles. The woman is selling colorful textiles. The woman looking and trying clothes in the shop. The woman looking and trying clothes in the shop. The college student walking on campus. The college student walking on campus. Welcome. Let's start. I am writing now. I am writing now. You are reading a book. You are reading a book. We are listening to music. We are listening to music. Mother is in the kitchen now. Mother is in the kitchen now. She is cooking dinner. She is cooking dinner. Do you want to share with me your dinner? Do you want to share with me your dinner? Does Jane like pizza? Does Jane like pizza? My father is in his office. My father is in his office. My sister is in her office. My sister is in her office. I'm interested in this book. I'm interested in this book. I'm good at tennis. I'm good at tennis. How many flowers are they? How many flowers are they? What's the time in New York? What's the time in New York? They are giving a party next Sunday. They are giving a party next Sunday. You like animals very much. You like animals very much. Does the cat drink milk in the morning? Does the cat drink milk in the morning? Does your sister have breakfast in the morning? Does your sister have breakfast in the morning? Your hat looks very nice. 
Your hat looks very nice. The car is near the beach. The car is near the beach. How often do you go to the cinema? How often do you go to the cinema? How many sisters do you have? How many sisters do you have? I'm very thirsty. I want to drink something. I'm very thirsty. I want to drink something. Do you have anything to eat? Do you have anything to eat? I have a lot of thing to eat. I have a lot of thing to eat. Live your life. No matter what they say, do what makes you happy. Did you feed the hunter today? Yeah, I fed him earlier today. Nice. Can you give him a bathe later? Sure, I'll do that later. Thank you. You know you need to take him to the vet appointment next week? I know. What time do we need to be there? You need to be there at 9 in the morning. Okay, I got it. Do you smell that? Yes, it's disgusting. I hate cigarette smoke. I can't stand it. It smells bad, really bad. Some smokers think they are cool. I think it's pathetic. A cigarette controls them. Don't, Don't smoke, smoke cigarettes. cigarettes. It's, it's really, really bad, bad for, for your, your health. health. Are you going to be in town this weekend? I'll be in town. Do you have plans for the weekend? No, I don't have any plans. Sunday is Tina's birthday, and we are throwing her a party. I would love to come to the party. Where are you going to have it? What time will it start? It's going to be at Phil's apartment building. It will start at 5 p.m. It's going to be fun. Isn't there a pool in Phil's apartment? I totally forgot. It's going to be a pool party. Don't forget to bring your trunks. I won't forget it. And I'll get a big present for Tina. Hello, try to repeat after us. Let's get started. Do you want to go out tonight? Sure, where do you want to go? How about a film? I can't wait to see the new Jackie Chan film. I don't like watching action movies, they always seem to be the same. Can't you arrange to see it with someone else another time? Okay. Well, we could go to Jim's party. That's fine, but only if you promise to be nice to him. I'll try, but it's very difficult. I just don't like his friends. You'll have to ignore them, or pretend to like them. If you can't manage to do either of those, then I'm not coming. Okay, what else could we do? Why don't we just decide to stay in? I don't mind ordering some food. Jim's parties are usually pretty useless anyway. You are right. Let's order a pizza. Jim phoned while you were out. What did he say? He said he bought the four tickets for the concert tonight. Are you serious? I was afraid they might be sold out. Did he say anything else? He asked if you'd arrange to pick up Pam on the way. I said I didn't know, and that you'd phone back when you got in. 
This concert is going to be great. Are you excited? I'm excited. Aren't you going to call Jim? Okay, I'll do that now. Hi. Hey. Let's start. Hello, Dwight. How are you? Very well, thank you. And you? I'm fine. It's good to see you again. I'm very happy to see you too. Angela, what do you want to do this winter? Well, I can tell you one thing, I don't want to work all winter. Me neither. Well then, what do you want to do? I want to go to Iceland. I want to see the Northern Lights. Have you ever been there? No, I have not. It would be amazing to go there with you. We should definitely go there. Somebody's playing the piano. It sounds nice, doesn't it? I wish I could play a musical instrument. Don't you play guitar? No, but my brother does, and he's pretty good at it. I took piano lessons for a couple of years, but I never learned to play very well. I guess I don't have any musical talent. That's not true. I heard you sing very well. What's the weather like in your hometown? It's always quite hot, especially in summer. How far is your hometown from here? It takes about five hours by car. What's the nightlife like in your hometown? It's not bad, but a little expensive. What about the shopping? What's it like? It is pretty interesting. There are a lot of nice shops. Hey. Hey everybody, what's up? Are you new around here? Yes, I am new in town. It's nice meeting you. I'm happy to meet you too. When did you move here? I moved here about two months ago. Do you like it here so far? I love it here. It's great. Welcome to the neighborhood. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Could you help me with something? How can I help you? I'm trying to find the mall. You don't know where it is? I've looked everywhere but I couldn't find it. The mall is right next to the theater. I don't know where the theater is either. Actually, I should go to the mall too. Do you want to go there together? Yeah, sure. That's very nice of you. Thank you. All right, let's go. I need to make an appointment. Are you going to see Dr. James? Never again. No way. I don't like him. He was not friendly at all during my last visit. What do you mean? What happened during your last visit? He was so rude. He answered none of my questions. He didn't even look at my face. I understand what you mean. Maybe he was in a bad mood that day. Because I know he is a good person. Hello, are you ready? Let's start. Are you new here? Yes, I just started yesterday. Welcome aboard. My name is Jeff. I'm Amy. Nice to meet you. What are you going to be working on? I'm going to work on the finance team, but I haven't started yet. I'm still in training. Our planning team works with them closely. We'll work together sometimes. That's great news. I really look forward to working with you. Have you seen Kevin? I've been looking for him everywhere. I don't know. 
I haven't seen him all day. What's today's date? Today is the 3rd of September. Okay, it makes sense now. Why? Why is today's important? Today's Kevin's brother's birthday. He's probably in London today. I hope he returns on time. Otherwise, the boss is going to be really mad. Yeah, that's why I'm worried. Let's just hope that he will be at the table tomorrow. We should call him right now. Today's been a very educational day for me so far. Thank you. You are welcome. I hope together we will work for this company for a long time. Do you want to drink something together after work? I want to get to know you better. Sure. It would be great to drink some coffee with you. Hello, how are you today? Let's start. Did you ask your boss for a raise? Yes, I asked for $10 any hour more. The real question is, did you get it? No, I got $3. Oh no, that's too bad. I think it's all right for now. It's better than nothing, right? I visited my dad's office today. Did you like his new office? Yeah, I did. It's surprisingly big, and it has an amazing view. Then we had lunch at a Chinese restaurant. Did you like the food there? It was very delicious. You got any plans for the weekend? I really would like to go to that restaurant. I'm free this weekend. We can go there. After that we can go to the new Batman movie. What do you think? This is a great plan. I haven't told you what happened yesterday, have I? You haven't told me anything yet. I got the promotion I was expecting. Are you kidding? This is great news. I'm really excited about it. I have more responsibilities with my new position. You really deserve this promotion. Your hard work has finally paid up. I'm so happy for you. We should throw a party on Friday. Thank you very much. Do you really want to throw a party? Yeah, I do. You don't get promoted every day, do you? Hi. Hey, welcome to another episode of Daily Conversations. Don't forget, practice makes perfect. Let's start. It's extremely hot right now. It's not even noon, yet. I'm afraid it will get hotter. The heat is killing me. Why don't you turn on the air conditioner? I tried turning it on yesterday. It doesn't work. Why doesn't it work? What happened? I have no idea. It's broken. When is it going to be fixed? I called the repairman this morning. When will he be here? He said he was busy. He will come next week. Oh no. What are we going to do without an air conditioner? I don't know. I guess we will just pray for a colder weather. Are you going to be at the party this Friday? I haven't decided yet. Are you going to go? Yes, I'll be there. I heard it's going to be a lot of fun. Is it really? What time does the party start? The party starts at 9 o'clock. I hope that you will go to the party. I'm not sure. Maybe I will go. Who else is going to be there? There will be a lot of people. Some of our friends will be there too. It's going to be a big party. It will be too crowded, so we probably won't come across them. There's going to be live music, drinks and food at the party. That sounds like it's going to be fun. I'm definitely going to be there. See you at the party. 
Hi. Hello. Try to repeat after us. Good morning. I'm Megan Scott. Nice to meet you, Ms. Scott. I'm Dwight Booker. Do you think you are qualified for secretary position? Do you think you are ready to work here? Tell me about yourself and your educational background. I've been living here in Toronto for five years. I've had secretarial training in business school. I'm a hardworking person, and I believe I can handle any kind of pressure. Time will show that. There will be a large volume of telephone calls, along with filing and fast typing. Do you think you can handle that? I've had a lot of training in each of those areas. I'll handle everything perfectly. This is a paper company. Have you ever done secretarial work for a paper company or anything similar? I can't say that I have, but I've worked as a secretary in some very busy offices, and I'm a fast learner, so I don't think that would be any problem. What's your schedule like, Dwight? I'm prepared to work full time, nine to five, from Monday to Friday. How would you feel about doing some overtime every now and then? Would you have a problem with that? I'm totally fine with that. Overtime wouldn't be a problem for me. Okay, Dwight. Your qualifications look very promising. Before we end today, do you have any questions for me? Yes. Can you tell me what benefits are available if I'm hired here? After you pass a two-month probationary period, you are entitled to enroll in our group medical plan, and also you'll have 15 vacation days and 15 sick days per year. That sounds great. Thank you, Miss Scott. Have a nice day. My name is Jane. I'm English, but I live in Barcelona, Spain. My father has a new job here. I love being in Barcelona because all the people here are really nice and helpful. I have got dark hair and big green eyes. I'm not very tall and I'm medium weight. I am a creative and hardworking person. I want to be a doctor, so I always study a lot. I like spending time alone. I also like watching movies and listening to music in my free time. Hi everyone, I'm Kevin. I'm new at this school, but I'm not new in London. I'm short and thin. I have got blue eyes and I wear glasses. I am a cheerful person. I really like telling funny stories and making jokes. But my teachers sometimes warn me to stop talking in the class because I am talkative. I can be selfish, but only for my car. My favorite activity is driving a car with my sister at weekends. I also enjoy surfing on the net. My name is Jane. I'm English, but I live in Barcelona, Spain. My father has a new job here. I love being in Barcelona. Because all the people here are really nice and helpful. I have got dark hair and big green eyes. I'm not very tall, and I'm medium weight. I am a creative and hardworking person. I want to be a doctor, so I always study a lot. I like spending time alone. I also like watching movies and listening to music in my free time. Hi, everyone. I'm Kevin. I'm new at this school, but I'm not new in London. I'm short and thin. 
I have got blue eyes and I wear glasses. I am a cheerful person. I really like telling funny stories and making jokes. But my teachers sometimes warn me to stop talking in the class because I'm talkative. I can be selfish but only for my car. My favorite activity is driving a car with my sister at weekends. I also enjoy surfing on the net. Hello. My name is Jane. I am 17 years old. I'm studying in high school. I have two sisters. My mother works at the bank. My father is a doctor. We have a beautiful house with a garden. I get up at 7 a.m. on weekdays. I wash my hands and face. My mother prepares breakfast. We have breakfast together as a family. My sister Mary is 9 years old, Isabella is 12 years old. My father drives us to school on the way to work. The first lesson starts at 9 o'clock. I have lunch in the canteen. I love toast. School ends at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. I go home by bus. I do the homework first. I help my mother prepare dinner. My father watches the news on TV. We have dinner as a family. After dinner, we drink tea in the garden. My sisters play games. I go to bed at 11 p.m. Before, I brush my teeth and read for half an hour. My sister Mary listens to music. And so another day ends. Hello. My name is Jane. I am 17 years old. I'm studying in high school. I have two sisters. My mother works at the bank. My father is a doctor. We have a beautiful house with a garden. I get up at 7 a.m. on weekdays. I wash my hands and face. My mother prepares breakfast. We have breakfast together as a family. My sister Mary is 9 years old, Isabella is 12 years old. My father drives us to school on the way to work. The first lesson starts at 9 o'clock. I have lunch in the canteen. I love toast. School ends at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. I go home by bus. I do the homework first. I help my mother prepare dinner. My father watches the news on TV. We have dinner as a family. After dinner, we drink tea in the garden. My sisters play games. I go to bed at 11 p.m. Before, I brush my teeth and read for half an hour. 
My sister Mary listens to music. And so another day ends. What is this? This is an apple. This is a fish. This is a newspaper. I only slept one hours. I have only two thousand dollars. He is a student. Kevin is a police officer. Jane is a doctor. They are students. I am a teacher. I am writing now. She is reading the newspaper. They are listening to music. I'm meeting Jane next Monday. Are you a teacher? Yes, I am a teacher. Are you a doctor? No, I am not a doctor. She is leaving London in two days. Do you take a bath every day? Yes, I do. What are you drinking? I am drinking cola. What do you have? I have a toast. What were they doing? Jane and David were dancing. Mary and Jane were eating sandwiches. How many keys are there? There are two keys. David and Kevin were playing cards. How many cups do you have? We have two cups. Jane has making models for 10 months. Have you ever seen a lion? Yes, I have. Where did you see it? I saw it in a zoo. He rarely goes out. Have you ever watched a basketball match? Yes, I have. When did you watch it? I watched it last Sunday. How often do you go to the cinema? I go to the cinema every weekend. I hardly ever go to the theater. The house is on the side of a hill. Can you tell me where is the dormitory? I'd like you to meet my friends. What do you think of your new boss? She wants him to be her friend. My uncle likes to go fishing. There is a computer in the office. Jane didn't feel comfortable with my friend. I can't play piano. I keep my money in the bank. I need to buy a new umbrella. How much does this cost? Do you have any shoes in my size? You are my best friend. 
Do you like science fiction movies? My brother likes old movies better. I can play the piano. Can I play some music? She loves blueberries. What is your job? What do you want to do? I met a friend of Jane's. She was born in London. I can play the guitar. How are things going? I like to play soccer. I caught the last bus. What happened to you? Do you play the guitar? I don't play the guitar. What do you think? I don't have time. What's your favorite movie? My favorite movie is Spider-Man. Never play on the road. Have you heard the news? I haven't heard anything. There are some flowers on the table. There are some books in the bag. What color is the book? The red bag is not near the radio. She is standing near the tree. Is there much milk in the glass? There is a lot of milk in the glass. I am writing with my right hand. I have found a pencil. I stayed home all day. She looked all around. David wants to be a pilot. The man is sitting in the room. Don't be late for the train. The dog is sleeping under the chair. I can't remember his name. I am coming from London. What did you buy? I bought a new car. I bought a t-shirt. Do you good sleep? Where can I buy some groceries? I must buy some milk. I bought a new suit. Why did you buy this? My father is an engineer. This is my friend Jane. Let me introduce you my friend Kevin. Do you have a reservation? Would you like to see the menu? Do you need any napkins? She is going to eat a hot dog. He sells hot dogs. She is shopping. He knows how to use the bow. She is drinking coffee. He likes boiled egg.
This painting is lovely. She sat next to him. Can you bring me a towel? Do you like bowling? Does she like strawberries? I love cows. Can you dive like him? She looked over my report. They work in a factory. I will go there even if it rains. His eyes are green. I've never flown in an airplane. She was holding a baseball bat. I'll be back by six o'clock. She said she had a slight cold. I left my gloves in the kitchen. His joy showed on his face. I have to go to the police station. The leaves fell. I think she's a great writer. This is a nice apartment. The island is warm all the year. They are classmates. Keep the dog out. They are hiding behind the curtain. We made pancakes for breakfast. The thief got away with the money. She has blonde hair. I can't find my history book. She's about the same height as him. She will leave the hospital soon. She gave him a big smile. I'd like to order some flowers. He is unable to buy a car. I'd like to reserve a table for two at six. How many pencils do you have? When is your birthday? Roll the ball to me. He runs a shoe shop. Where's the nearest bus stop? He fed his dog at the same time every day. She didn't like the horse at first. Jake runs fast.
He reads before bedtime. Do you need a ride? She taught him how to play the piano. Tom doesn't like bread. Oranges have a lot of vitamin C. I'll carry this briefcase for you. I think it's highly unlikely that I'll ever see my stolen motorcycle again. They're going to eat apples. Is there a doctor in the house? He is taking a walk. The castle is beautiful. How high is that mountain? The furniture was dusty. Please open the bottle. Playing the guitar is fun. She said goodbye to him. My father gave his compass to me. I enjoy working on the computer. I got a new computer for my birthday. When the weather's bad, I read books. When it's raining, I like to draw pictures of animals. I go training every evening. Where did you go for your holidays? Do you have any pets? Do you live in a house or an apartment? When is your birthday? How old are you? Do you have any children? How much will you give me for my old car? I've wrecked my car. My car has broken down. You must drive carefully. It was cold yesterday. It is sunny today. It will be cloudy tomorrow. Do you have a compass? Would you like a glass of juice? Would you like tea or coffee? Do you drink tea with milk? Our teacher is good at playing football. Our dad is good at playing basketball. I played basketball on the school team. This house is very cheap. This house is very expensive. Mice like cheese very much. Mice have very small eyes. The sun is shining. Can I use your phone? I need something to drink. I would like bread with cheese. I like to eat fruit. 
I like to eat apple. Are you going to take a plane or train? Did you send me flowers? Those flowers are beautiful. Do you have a pencil? Do you have a house? Have you eaten at that restaurant? There is a new restaurant opening across the park. Can I have a glass of water please? Can I have the bill please? You have a very nice car. I bought a new car last week. My favorite drink is tea. My favorite drink is coffee. Your house is very nice. My house is very big. What color is that car? That restaurant is not expensive. My cell phone doesn't work. What is your cell phone number? What is your email address? What type of music do you like? 30 Basic English Phrases Can I switch off the lights? Can I open the window? How are you feeling? I don't feel good. Where does it hurt? Do you have a fever? What's bothering you? How long are you going to stay? How long have you been here? I'm working on a big project. I'm working on my homework. I'm working on a new car project. How much does this cost? How much is that? How old are you? How tall are you? Would you like anything to drink? Do you want something to eat or drink? Can I get you a drink? I would like to order my food now. Where is there a bank around here? I want to change money. I want to open an account. Do you have any money? Can you lend me some money? How can I help you? I need your help. How often have you been here? When did you see him last? I last saw Jane last weekend. Welcome to English Education Channel. The sun is shining. 
The sun is shining. Can I use your phone? Can I use your phone? I need something to drink. I need something to drink. I would like bread with cheese. I would like bread with cheese. I like to eat fruit. I like to eat fruit. I like to eat apple. I like to eat apple. Are you going to take a plane or train? Are you going to take a plane or train? Did you send me flowers? Did you send me flowers? Those flowers are beautiful. Those flowers are beautiful. Do you have a pencil? Do you have a pencil? Do you have a house? Do you have a house? Have you eaten at that restaurant? Have you eaten at that restaurant? There is a new restaurant opening across the park. There is a new restaurant opening across the park. Can I have a glass of water please? Can I have a glass of water please? Can I have the bill please? Can I have the bill please? You have a very nice car. You have a very nice car. I bought a new car last week. I bought a new car last week. My favorite drink is tea. My favorite drink is tea. My favorite drink is coffee. My favorite drink is coffee. Your house is very nice. Your house is very nice. My house is very big. My house is very big. What color is that car? What color is that car? That restaurant is not expensive. That restaurant is not expensive. My cell phone doesn't work. My cell phone doesn't work. 
What is your cell phone number? What is your cell phone number? What is your email address? What is your email address? What type of music do you like? What type of music do you like? I enjoy working on the computer. I enjoy working on the computer. I got a new computer for my birthday. I got a new computer for my birthday. When the weather's bad, I read books. When the weather's bad, I read books. When it's raining, I like to draw pictures of animals. When it's raining, I like to draw pictures of animals. I go training every evening. I go training every evening. Where did you go for your holidays? Where did you go for your holidays? Do you have any pets? Do you have any pets? Do you live in a house or an apartment? Do you live in a house or an apartment? When is your birthday? When is your birthday? How old are you? How old are you? Do you have any children? Do you have any children? How much will you give me for my old car? How much will you give me for my old car? I've wrecked my car. I've wrecked my car. My car has broken down. My car has broken down. You must drive carefully. You must drive carefully. It was cold yesterday. It was cold yesterday. It is sunny today. It is sunny today. It will be cloudy tomorrow. It will be cloudy tomorrow. Do you have a compass? Do you have a compass? Would you like a glass of juice?
Would you like a glass of juice? Would you like tea or coffee? Would you like tea or coffee? Do you drink tea with milk? Do you drink tea with milk? Our teacher is good at playing football. Our teacher is good at playing football. Our dad is good at playing basketball. Our dad is good at playing basketball. I played basketball on the school team. I played basketball on the school team. This house is very cheap. This house is very cheap. This house is very expensive. This house is very expensive. Mice like cheese very much. Mice like cheese very much. Mice have very small eyes. Mice have very small eyes. Welcome to our YouTube channel. We had a meal in an expensive restaurant. We had a meal in an expensive restaurant. How many meals a day do you have? How many meals a day do you have? Here's an apple. Just one apple. Here's an apple. Just one apple. Did you enjoy your vacation in Hawaii? Did you enjoy your vacation in Hawaii? What did you do in the summer? What did you do in the summer? I like summery weather. I like summery weather. We usually go on holiday in the summer. We usually go on holiday in the summer. I went to Camp Blue to learn how to swim. I went to Camp Blue to learn how to swim. It's difficult to swim in the waves. It's difficult to swim in the waves. I like going swimming in the summer. I like going swimming in the summer. Have you ever been on a school trip? Have you ever been on a school trip? Have you ever been to England? Have you ever been to England? 
London is the capital of England and the United Kingdom. London is the capital of England and the United Kingdom. I made a trip to London last weekend. I made a trip to London last weekend. He met many friends on his travels. He met many friends on his travels. How long are you staying? How long are you staying? Where do you stay in England? Where are you stay in England? Did you have any trouble finding the hotel? Did you have any trouble finding the hotel? Would you have a room for tonight please? Would you have a room for tonight please? I'd like to book a room please. I'd like to book a room please. Our hotel is not responsible for lost or stolen articles. Our hotel is not responsible for lost or stolen articles. How much is a single room per night? How much is a single room per night? Do you serve breakfast? Do you serve breakfast? Is there a restaurant in the hotel? Is there a restaurant in the hotel? Is there anything you would recommend? Is there anything you would recommend? Could I see the menu, please? Could I see the menu, please? I'd like the soup, please. I'd like the soup, please. Excuse me, but my soup is cold. Excuse me, but my soup is cold. Could I have some more bread, please? Could I have some more bread, please? Could I have the bill, please? Could I have the bill, please? Live your life. No matter what they say, do what makes you happy. Did you feed the hunter today? Yeah, I fed him earlier today. Nice. Can you give him a bathe later? Sure, I'll do that later. Thank you. You know you need to take him to the vet appointment next week? I know. What time do we need to be there? You need to be there at 9 in the morning. Okay, I got it. Do you smell that? Yes, it's disgusting. I hate cigarette smoke. I can't stand it. It smells bad, 
really bad. Some smokers think they are cool. I think it's pathetic. A cigarette controls them. Don't, Don't smoke, smoke cigarettes. cigarettes. It's, it's really, really bad, bad for, for your, your health. health. Are you going to be in town this weekend? I'll be in town. Do you have plans for the weekend? No, I don't have any plans. Sunday is Tina's birthday, and we are throwing her a party. I would love to come to the party. Where are you going to have it? What time will it start? It's going to be at Phil's apartment building. It will start at 5 p.m. It's going to be fun. Isn't there a pool in Phil's apartment? I totally forgot. It's going to be a pool party. Don't forget to bring your trunks. I won't forget it. And I'll get a big present for Tina. Hello, try to repeat after us. Let's get started. Do you want to go out tonight? Sure. Where do you want to go? How about a film? I can't wait to see the new Jackie Chan film. I don't like watching action movies. They always seem to be the same. Can't you arrange to see it with someone else another time? Okay. Well, we could go to Jim's party. That's fine, but only if you promise to be nice to him. I'll try, but it's very difficult. I just don't like his friends. You'll have to ignore them, or pretend to like them. If you can't manage to do either of those, then I'm not coming. Okay, what else could we do? Why don't we just decide to stay in? I don't mind ordering some food. Jim's parties are usually pretty useless anyway. You are right. Let's order a pizza. Jim phoned while you were out. What did he say? He said he'd bought the four tickets for the concert tonight. Are you serious? I was afraid they might be sold out. Did he say anything else? He asked if you'd arrange to pick up Pam on the way. I said I didn't know, and that you'd phone back when you got in. This concert is going to be great. Are you excited? I'm excited. Aren't you going to call Jim? Okay, I'll do that now. Hi. Hey. Let's start. Hello, Dwight. How are you? Very well, thank you. And you? I'm fine. It's good to see you again. I'm very happy to see you too. Angela, what do you want to do this winter? Well, I can tell you one thing, I don't want to work all winter. Me neither. Well then, what do you want to do? I want to go to Iceland. I want to see the Northern Lights. Have you ever been there? No, I have not. It would be amazing to go there with you. We should definitely go there. Somebody's playing the piano. It sounds nice, doesn't it? I wish I could play a musical instrument. Don't you play guitar? No, but my brother does, and he's pretty good at it. I took piano lessons for a couple of years, but I never learned to play very well. I guess I don't have any musical talent. That's not true. I heard you sing very well. What's the weather like in your hometown? It's always quite hot, especially in summer. How far is your hometown from here? It takes about five hours by car. What's the nightlife like in your hometown? It's not bad, but a little expensive. What about the shopping? What's it like? It is pretty interesting. There are a lot of nice shops. Hey. Hey everybody, what's up? 
Are you new around here? Yes, I am new in town. It's nice meeting you. I'm happy to meet you too. When did you move here? I moved here about two months ago. Do you like it here so far? I love it here. It's great. Welcome to the neighborhood. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Could you help me with something? How can I help you? I'm trying to find the mall. You don't know where it is? I've looked everywhere but I couldn't find it. The mall is right next to the theater. I don't know where the theater is either. Actually, I should go to the mall too. Do you want to go there together? Yeah, sure. That's very nice of you. Thank you. All right, let's go. I need to make an appointment. Are you going to see Dr. James? Never again. No way. I don't like him. He was not friendly at all during my last visit. What do you mean? What happened during your last visit? He was so rude. He answered none of my questions. He didn't even look at my face. I understand what you mean. Maybe he was in a bad mood that day. Because I know he is a good person. Hello, are you ready? Let's start. Are you new here? Yes, I just started yesterday. Welcome aboard. My name is Jeff. I'm Amy. Nice to meet you. What are you going to be working on? I'm going to work on the finance team, but I haven't started yet. I'm still in training. Our planning team works with them closely. We'll work together sometimes. That's great news. I really look forward to working with you. Have you seen Kevin? I've been looking for him everywhere. I don't know. I haven't seen him all day. What's today's date? Today is the 3rd of September. Okay, it makes sense now. Why? Why is today's important? Today's Kevin's brother's birthday. He's probably in London today. I hope he returns on time. Otherwise, the boss is going to be really mad. Yeah, that's why I'm worried. Let's just hope that he will be at the table tomorrow. We should call him right now. Today's been a very educational day for me so far. Thank you. You are welcome. I hope together we will work for this company for a long time. Do you want to drink something together after work? I want to get to know you better. Sure. It would be great to drink some coffee with you. Hello. How are you today? Let's start. Did you ask your boss for a raise? Yes, I asked for $10 any hour more. The real question is, did you get it? No, I got $3. Oh no, that's too bad. I think it's all right for now. It's better than nothing, right? I visited my dad's office today. Did you like his new office? Yeah, I did. It's surprisingly big, and it has an amazing view. Then we had lunch at a Chinese restaurant. Did you like the food there? It was very delicious. You got any plans for the weekend? I really would like to go to that restaurant. I'm free this weekend. We can go there. After that we can go to the new Batman movie. What do you think? This is a great plan. I haven't told you what happened yesterday, have I? You haven't told me anything yet. 
I got the promotion I was expecting. Are you kidding? This is great news. I'm really excited about it. I have more responsibilities with my new position. You really deserve this promotion. Your hard work has finally paid up. I'm so happy for you. We should throw a party on Friday. Thank you very much. Do you really want to throw a party? Yeah, I do. You don't get promoted every day, do you? Hi. Hey, welcome to another episode of Daily Conversations. Don't forget, practice makes perfect. Let's start. It's extremely hot right now. It's not even noon, yet. I'm afraid it will get hotter. The heat is killing me. Why don't you turn on the air conditioner? I tried turning it on yesterday. It doesn't work. Why doesn't it work? What happened? I have no idea. It's broken. When is it going to be fixed? I called the repairman this morning. When will he be here? He said he was busy. He will come next week. Oh no. What are we going to do without an air conditioner? I don't know. I guess we will just pray for a colder weather. Are you going to be at the party this Friday? I haven't decided yet. Are you going to go? Yes, I'll be there. I heard it's going to be a lot of fun. Is it really? What time does the party start? The party starts at 9 o'clock. I hope that you will go to the party. I'm not sure. Maybe I will go. Who else is going to be there? There will be a lot of people. Some of our friends will be there too. It's going to be a big party. It will be too crowded, so we probably won't come across them. There's going to be live music, drinks and food at the party. That sounds like it's going to be fun. I'm definitely going to be there. See you at the party. Hi. Hello, try to repeat after us. Good morning, I'm Megan Scott. Nice to meet you Ms. Scott. I'm Dwight Booker. Do you think you are qualified for secretary position? Do you think you are ready to work here? Tell me about yourself and your educational background. I've been living here in Toronto for five years. I've had secretarial training in business school. I'm a hardworking person and I believe I can handle any kind of pressure. Time will show that. There will be a large volume of telephone calls along with filing and fast typing. Do you think you can handle that? I've had a lot of training in each of those areas. I'll handle everything perfectly. This is a paper company. Have you ever done secretarial work for a paper company or anything similar? I can't say that I have, but I've worked as a secretary in some very busy offices and I'm a fast learner, so I don't think that would be any problem. What's your schedule like, Dwight? I'm prepared to work full time, 9 to 5, from Monday to Friday. How would you feel about doing some overtime every now and then? Would you have a problem with that? I'm totally fine with that. Overtime wouldn't be a problem for me. Okay, Dwight, your qualifications look very promising. Before we end today, do you have any questions for me? Yes, can you tell me what benefits are available if I'm hired here? After you pass a 2-month probationary period, you are entitled to enroll in our group medical plan and also You'll have 15 vacation days and 15 sick days per year. That sounds great. Thank you, Ms. Scott. Have a nice day. 30 Basic English Phrases Can I switch off the lights? Can I open the window? 
How are you feeling? I don't feel good. Where does it hurt? Do you have a fever? What's bothering you? How long are you going to stay? How long have you been here? I'm working on a big project. I'm working on my homework. I'm working on a new car project. How much does this cost? How much is that? How old are you? How tall are you? Would you like anything to drink? Do you want something to eat or drink? Can I get you a drink? I would like to order my food now. Where is there a bank around here? I want to change money. I want to open an account. Do you have any money? Can you lend me some money?